All right, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. And actually, we're back from the AGDQ event that just happened. I do want to say welcome anyone coming from that, and welcome back anyone who uh, watched this previously, I suppose. Uh, before we do begin, I just want to remind everyone that all revenue after taxes that GDQ earns from subscriptions and bids for the month of January will be donated to PCF. We reached 3.4 million, so let's see if we can get to 3.5 million. Uh, in addition to that, I just want to say welcome back, everyone. It's great to be back, and it's great to see you all again. Uh, we had our show right before GDQ, and this show is much less of a distinct theme and is more of a, I think these games are cool, and it's a nice kind of welcome on in and welcome back, as I guess that's kind of the general vibe of today's show. Anyway, our first run of the night is going to be slightly confusing, and I've seen this in chat, and I talked about it with the runner beforehand. Uh, D2 is not Diablo 2. Um, no. That, that's going to be the thing. People... Uh, you see D2, no, no, this is going to be a weird Dreamcast game. So if you're thinking Diablo 2, no, 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 no. This is very, very different. But uh, that's going to be our first game, and it should be interesting to go into. It's not a game you see quite a lot, and it'll kind of dictate the vibe of the show going throughout the year. All right, anyway, that being said, let's go on to D2 with Punchy. Hello, everyone. I'm Punchy, and this is not Diablo 2. <laughs> this is D2. A sequel to D, a Sega Saturn game by the late and great Kenji Eno. Uh, it's a direct sequel despite the fact it doesn't actually have any direct narrative connection to that game if you happen to have played it. And this is a... What, what kind of a game is D2? You know what, let's... why don't we just begin and you will see what kind of a game D2 is. It's quite the trip. Uh, I will count you in. Count of three, I guess? Yep. Three, two, one. Video games. So the basic premise of this game is that Laura Parton is on a plane going somewhere. It gets struck by a meteor in mid-flight and she crashes into the Canadian wilderness. That's the setup. That's the setup of the video game. And there are weird spooky plant monsters everywhere. And the goal is like, get off the Canadian mountain place. This opens with a fair few cutscenes. And uh, no... This game has no relation to D4, that is a completely different game by a completely different person. Anyway, these are the indoor segments, they're controlled sort of on rails, like... I'm opening this cabinet to get a submachine gun, but every single, like, item pickup in this entire game is considered a cutscene and therefore can be skipped, which is interesting. But then you can free look using the Y button, and you need that to collect shotgun bullet. Shotgun bullet will be important, because, uh... The shotgun is powerful, even though we're not actually going to get the shotgun for some time. Is it only one? It's it's like a pack, but it for some reason just a shotgun bullet. Uh, and this is the hunting mechanic. We're only going to use this once because the game forces us into it for tutorializing. Also, you, you're hearing Japanese voices because this is a Japanese copy of the game. The English copy of D2 is incredibly expensive. You will have to bear with me on this one. Hunting. I shot a bunny. I got two meats. We are going to collect six meats by default as a function of this hunting tutorial. It kind of just throws you into the hunting before it even really bothers to explain how the game works. But uh, meats are a healing item, which is convenient for our purposes, because that means we are forced to collect a certain minimum of healing, which makes the game pretty safe, relatively speaking. Relatively speaking. But okay, I have now shot three bunnies. Kimberly is very pleased with that's Kimberly, by the way. We're not going to see her all that much, but there she is nevertheless. And now we are in the game field. Let us walk around a snowy mountain uh, in heels. That's a first aid spray. It's green. There are three kinds of first aid sprays, green, yellow, and red. It, it gets stronger as it goes. Like yellow is stronger than green, red is stronger than yellow. You get it? Okay. Healing items. So, what kind of a game is D2? As we walk through, up the snowy hill in an effort to find a thing. Something will eventually take place. Or maybe it won't, actually. It'd be good if it didn't. No, nope, there it is. Guess what? D2 is an RPG. That's a random encounter. But it's not quite an RPG, right? Because battles take place as, like, a first-person shooter. But I have my trusty gun with which to sort of point and do the shoot thing. As one does. This is quite a rough first encounter to get, frankly. Oh yeah, also you turn with like... Oh, ow. Yeah, pretty rough first encounter. Anyway. 
you get experience when you win fights. And that eventually grants level ups. Leveling up increases your attack power and your maximum health. All right, we have entered this building. We don't actually really need to do anything here. But I'm going to do... That's the wrong thing to look at. Hang on. Give me shotgun bullet. It's important. I need that for later. All we needed to do right now was enter that building, and then we're going to walk all the way back to where we can. Well, I say all the way back. We're just going to walk back. It's not that far. But uh, there's a cabinet in there that's locked, and you don't need to inspect it. You just need to have entered the building for the game to go, oh, you know, you've tried to look at the cabinet, and your character now knows. It's, it's the kind of game where the character needs to know that she needs to do something before you can do it. You can't just do it. Right. I feel like I, like, gamers, you, you understand how that works by now. It's, like, it's, it's that kind of game. There's, there's games where you can do things before the character knows they need to do it, and then there's games that make you step through what the character needs to do in order. So you're getting one enemy, that's good luck, because it's, uh, it's easy to kill. But they're not worth that much experience. So you do want level ups also restore your health to full, which is convenient. It negates the need for much healing throughout the run. Anyway, sorry. But the enemies are getting a spawn in general. Is that RNG, or is it more of the amount of enemies that's RNG? It's getting spawns is random, but it's not that random, if that makes any sense. Right. Like, you'll pretty much always get two encounters going to and back from that house back to the starting place. But uh, what the encounters contain is a different matter like enemy encounter type matters a lot more than how many because you generally get the same number roughly can you get three enemies been encountered you can you can in fact get a lot more than three sometimes although at the start the encounters are the encounters are pretty much only two at the start it varies as you go there's different like, there's like different zones you progress through also uh in the plot right there i spoke to kimberly she was napping on the bed i grimaced at her. Laura does not speak in this game, by the way. She just kind of looks plaintively at people, and they sort of mind-read her based on that. Uh, and so Kimberly interpreted, oh, do you need the key for the cabinet in that house up there? I have the key. Have it. So we now have a key for the cabinet that was locked. What enemy? That's pretty nice. If I can get it before it burrows under the ground. Yeah, just about like... There you go. That's the nice quick encounter you need. The submachine has, has infinite ammo, by the way. There's our first level up. I'm now level two and therefore slightly stronger, but more importantly, my health is now refilled. So why are looking at the still a couple more questions? One, is playing this in the Dreamcast at all awkward? I know you've done Illbleed in the past, but like, I know sometimes the controllers kind of bit odd to me. It's, it's all right, I think. It's fine. I can make do. And then the second question, which I guess uh, is definitely uh, the one I definitely been wanting to ask with this, wasn't D one like a PlayStation one game that was like a point and click thing? Yes, it is. The PlayStation one game. I think it was actually originally a Saturn game, but it got ported to PlayStation one. Uh, Saturn. It got ported to Saturn, PlayStation one, and then I think PC later on. You can actually get it on Steam under the name D the video game because Steam does not let you set a one character title ID. Really? Yeah. Huh. You can't. And more importantly, have you played D1, and do they really yeah. connect at all? They... no, they do not. <laughs> I have played D, but they do not. The, the connecting tissue between the D games is that they use the same digital actress, which is a concept that Kenji Eno coined as using a sort of similar model for the protagonist in the game. Like, this character is Laura Parton. And the protagonist of the first D is Laura Lewis, I think? But they're both Laura, and they look the same because he uses the same character model between games. He came up with a very fancy way to justify asset reuse, basically. This is despite the fact that Laura also does not speak. So, like, no one's acting anything. I don't know what... Like, I can't understand the minds of these auteur game devs. They're up to something. Anyway, we opened the cabinet, we got a grenade, which we are not going to use until disc four. This is a four disc game, by the way. Uh, and we also picked up a radio. And so we're going to go back to Kimberly, and she's going to turn on that radio, and she starts talking to us about her poetry. It goes on for some time. 
But once we are done with poetry hour, we can leave. Fortunately, this game lets you skip cutscenes. The joy of playing this game is really like, I would say about half in the cutscenes, but also it's super wordy. It's like Metal Gear Solid type wordy. If you could not skip cutscenes, this run would be literally like six hours long. Oh. It's, it's a lot. There's a lot of dialogue. Long scenes where characters just talk at each other. It's all kind of, it's interesting, but it's very long-winded. That cutscene I just skipped is the radio sort of does a little static noise at you and it, like, it instructs you to come to the, cr the crash site. Because like I said, we were on a plane and it crashed, but we haven't seen where the plane crashed. It's slightly further ahead. We just haven't had a reason to go there yet. If you go there too early, there's nothing to do. This is one of those games that follows a very sort of linear scripted sequence of events, so you got to like sort of hit the flags. One encounter, that's pretty nice. If I can get him before he burrows, that should be easy. I've got level two now. Level two makes this easier. We've hit a power peak with one level up. So now I have to trek a sizable distance. This is where randomness comes into play heavily. This is an RPG, so randomness plays a fairly large, non-trivial role in how good your run is. As you know, encounters, they're random. Contents of the encounters are also random. Enemy behavior itself is also random. There's a grenade. We'll pick up Granada. It says G bomb on it. Grenades are very powerful. They basically just instantly win fights, and for the most part, I stockpile them for use at the end of the game where the difficulty gets very sharp. Long cutscenes of people talking, but not the main character. Yes. Uh, people talk... I say long scenes of characters talking. It's more long scenes of character talking. Laura sits there and gestures. It's an interesting creative decision, to say the least. We try That's close best. to me. I heard that. There we go. I'm trying to avoid taking damage unnecessarily. Taking damage is slow, after all. Because getting hit causes your aim to, like, jerk wildly, so you want to avoid taking damage where you can. Right, and the crash site is over here to the left. Laura doesn't speak in any of the loosely collected D games. Like, th th there's, there's a game called Enemy Zero that also features, like, the Laura as digital actress type deal. Uh, but it is, it's considered sort of like D1 and a half, as far as, like, the general genealogy of the series is concerned. And she does not speak in that game either. Dude just had a thing for silent protagonists named Laura. Don't ask me, I didn't make the game. We do get something to go with that grenadine. But all in due time. Yeah, I actually like this game sort of hybrid RPG FPS random combat style type deal. It's kind of, it's a bit Parasite Eevee in a sense, a bit. It's, it's within that general ballpark. If you liked Parasite Eve, you might want to give this one a try. I think it's kind of similar enough. It's a bit less RPG than a Parasite Eve is though. Oh, three enemies, rude. That's not my definition of ideal. Get out me face. Also get out me face. Ooh, no hit. Sad. Oh, yep. That's a hit I'd rather not have taken, but oh well. So, in addition to leveling up, is there any other ways of healing if anything goes wrong? Yeah, you can either shoot animals for their meat, or you can use the first aid sprays you collect. Oh. Of which you generally get plenty. That's like, if you were does. If you were, like, really balling very hard, like, doing, like, super serious optimal world record attempts, you'd pick up no healing at all. Right. Because you start with enough to basically to complete the game with, more or less. But I will play it less crazy than that, because things can go wrong. Things can and do go wrong. It's an RPG. 
Right, boss fight. There's a boss here. I forgot to mention that. The weak point is not actually the boss. It's that butterfly flying around. Do you see it? It's very small. Oh. It reminds me of the, uh, that one fight in the House of the Dead 2 with the, Ow. uh... Ow. Zeal and Carl. Ow. Also, you're just getting... Yeah, that happens. Don't worry about it. Oh. There's actually... You can't really stop that from happening. There we go. That was actually really good luck. The butterfly can disappear if it so desires and land on the top of your gun where you can't hit it just to annoy you. But uh, I got the good pattern where it just kind of sits there and lets me shoot it four times and then it dies. And then Laura passes out or something. I don't know. She has like a vision. I'm not going to summarize the entire plot here. It's about everything. And honestly, it's a bit confused. It's, a, it's about environmentalism. It's about philosophy. It's about humanity's place in the cosmos. It's about way too much. I'm just going to shoot plant dudes and leave. She tries her best. But yes, Laura has now passed out and Kimberly like picks her up and brings her back to the starting place. And now we're back at the starting place again, but it's darker. That's how you can tell the progress has been made. There's also a snowmobile out front of the house. We can't ride it. Not yet. We'll get there. Unfortunately, we once again have to slug it walking through the snow in our heels. The it is hinted that the butterfly is the weak point in the cutscene preceding the fight. It's just I skipped it, so. One encounter again, that's nice. Fortunately, after that boss fight, you get a free heal. Oh, actually, I didn't mention this because I forgot about it, but the other way you can heal is you can heal for free uh, in any bed. If you walk up to a bed and interact with it in a building, Laura will take a nap. And then she'll wake up. This takes two cutscenes. Oh, cool, level up. This takes two cutscenes, and therefore you spend time skipping them, which means in a speedrun you don't want to do it. But uh, it's a free way to get a heal at any point. And some story events, like the first boss, will force Laura into sort of like... She wakes up somewhere. And when she wakes up somewhere, the game deems that as like, oh, she slept, so it should refill your health. Though it's, uh, it's pretty kind about that. It tends to refill your health after major boss fights like that. But okay, now we're approaching the sort of intersection. This is what I call sort of zone two of the first area. Like where you are on the map determines the enemy encounters you get. Where I'm currently standing is what I will generously call zone two. Ouch. And generally means enemies will start spawning in slightly higher numbers. I've become accustomed to these sort of zones via just playing the game a lot. It's not a thing the game makes explicit. This is just me sort of trying to explain vague concepts. What does D2 stand for? <laughs> Wait till the end. D does in fact stand for something. Honestly, it's funnier with story context. I'm not sure it would hit that hard, but... I'm still gonna wait. I'll tell you what the, the D in the first D stands for. Uh, spoilers for like a 20 year old game, well over 20 year old game actually. How old is the first D at this point? Whatever. Anyway, spoilers for what the D in the first D stands for. Put like a pan on your head and bang it very loudly if you don't want to hear. All right. The D in the first D stands for Dracula. I couldn't get my headphones off in time, I tried. <laughs> oh. I tried. Well, I've given you no context for that. Uh, the, D, the D in what D2 stands like. Uh, Try a sentence, Punchy. The D in D2 does not, in fact, stand for Dracula. It stands for something completely different. But I'll, I'll chat, you can guess. It has two Ds in it. That's why it's called D2. We are very clever. We, we're, we're in sort of the quantum brow region of, of game development. Again, very much like a Metal Gear Solid. It's very, it's very Hideo Kojima-y where it's like the superimposition of clever and quite silly. Apparently you're telling me it's Death Stranding 2. <laughs> Death Stranding 2. It's one word, not multiple words. Oh. Dude 2. <laughs> Dude is a funny guess. <laughs> it's got two Ds in it. We have a lot of guesses in chat right now. Dead, daddy, that's three Ds. What are you on about? That's what D3 will be about. 
<laughs> Double dragon. Dodge. <laughs> Get all gear solid. Dad's donut. Dream, <laughs> dream drop distance. <laughs> All right, this area is kind of like what I'd consider to be zone three of the area where these guys start showing up. They're green. That means they're stronger. Oh, he's like giving me the workaround. Oh, what a rude guy. And there's three enemies in this encounter as well, which is really unfortunate. Oh, good lord. None of that, please. That's pretty rough. Three dudes and like beefy dudes at that, but that's that's the roll of the dice. That's okay. Get a nice 11 experience out of it. Dodgeball? Dodo. These nuts. I think every other answer is. I probably, the I probably word shouldn't be reading them all off. Every other answer is how the word D's in it. <laughs> I shouldn't read off the, the chat just verbatim like that. I feel like I'm going to say something bad by accident. It's a dangerous game to play. But yes, the word that D2 stands for is a word that begins with D. And it's got two Ds in it. Oh, I oh, got another three encounter. Boo. These are rough because you can never like you can never quite predict which enemies are gonna like try and attack you first. You basically just have to guess. Like I'm going to get hit by this no matter what I do. Or I, maybe I'm not, because that cancelled. No, no, never mind. I spoke too soon. Got kicked in the head for it. Oh, the rudeness of it. I'm not going to heal, because I reckon if I win this fight, I get a level up out of it. And that will heal me back to full. Also, there a you very, go. Um, it's a very prediction. timely question. Um, do you know if there's any differences between the Japanese version and the North American version? As far as I know, absolutely zero. Okay. As far as running the game is concerned, zero. All right. All the puzzles are the same, all the content's the same, all the balancing is the same, as far as I know. I've played it both ways, multiple times, in fact. Why have I played so much D2? You're the only but person I know who's played D2. I'm the only runner of this game. One of one. One of one. I'm gonna get hit for that, because I don't have enough damage to kill this guy in one go. That's fine, though. You see, my maximum health is now, like, 50, which is a lot from... You know, I started with, like, 21, so now I'm... This game paradoxically gets, like, slightly easier as it goes. Like, the start of the game's really rough when your max health is really low. You can die to a bad random encounter without too much difficulty. You get a couple of level ups in your system though, and the game gets a lot safer. That's most of the start. Anyway, we were coming up here to get in a truck. We found a truck. There we go. I'm going to open the glove box, which is again its own cutscene, which is jarring. I just want the shotgun bullet. I'm going to call it shotgun bullet. I'm respecting the way the game stylizes it. And now I'm going to crash the truck directly into a gate. You are not going to see this because unfortunately Laura like takes ages to get the car started. But nevertheless, she crashes the thing straight through the gate. Just straight through it. Also, there was a gate here for us to crash through. This lets us access the mining facility, which we cannot actually go into right now because the elevator downwards is password locked. And the password is generated randomly. But I want that shotgun bullet. We just have to go in here and like acknowledge that we cannot go into the building before it'll let us leave. Ah, I'm struggling with the controls and help. Give me that first aid spray. There we go. Okay, now that we've been in there and we've confirmed that we cannot go down the elevator, we will now fight boss number two. I call this one the bird boss. 
I, you will figure out why shortly. It occasionally becomes vulnerable with that little plant coming out of his crotch. It's a metaphor. See if you can guess which kind of metaphor. Don't actually post it, you'll get banned. I just don't know. It's too subtle. Oh, I'm going to get hit for that because I wasn't paying attention. Get shot. So yeah, when it opens up, shoot it. Takes the damage. You can do sort of tick damage if you shoot it, even while it's not vulnerable, but it's not that much. Okay, so it has released a bird from his pocket. And the bird is big! This is good bird RNG! The bird attacks on our behalf, dealing massive damage. Wait, what? There are, there are a number of things that can occur when bird appears. Uh, that's good bird RNG, when the bird attacks for you. But sometimes it can pick up the boss and fly away with it and does a whole like loop-de-loop -loop around the arena. That's bad bird RNG because that just wastes time and doesn't do damage. I win. So good bird RNG saves us time. These boss fights have actually been pretty good on disc one so far. Go me. And once again, Laura just like blacks out in the snow. Or is it, I guess it'd be whiting out in this case. Is there a technical distinction between the two? I don't care. We wake up in bed again. It happens. And we now we have an ID card from the old man's corpse, the bird guy. He explodes into birds when he's killed. Are all the birds that large? Only some of them. Oh. I don't know why. It's night time now. And the ID card we got off him was for a safe back in the very first house we went to. So we're going to go back there and acquire useful items. Is that a dove? It was a dove. He's full of doves. He's, he's like made of doves. He's like a dove guy. Well, I guess that answers my I'm... question for acid. <laughs> He's he's full of, I don't I don't know. He's just a guy that like explodes into doves. It's full of he's full of doves. Like a That's just his thing. His, his thing is that like okay, so like in the lore, he's a magician type person. It's not like his profession, it's just sort of a hobby. You find like his personal affects, and one of his affects is like a stick that like flowers come out when you pull on the end, that sort of thing. You actually have to pick up the stick. I already picked it up earlier. It was in the cabinet alongside the radio. The game automatically picks it up for you. There is there is much going on here. <laughs> Please give me this extra first aid spray. Okay, we have the e-card key so we can open this safe. And in this safe is a radio or a walkie-talkie and a grenade, which I do not care much about the radio, although it's plot mandatory, so there you go. The grenade is important, I like grenade. And the shotgun. The shotgun is a strong weapon, but its ammo is limited. Also, the code for the thing is on the wall there, 1593. I actually need to write that down, because it's randomized from playthrough to playthrough, you see. Huh. It's always different. I've, I've, I've never seen that code before. I have like a little spreadsheet of uh, all the code combos I've seen in an attempt to sort of deduce it down to a pattern. As far as I know, it generates every single digit, like, randomly, like Silent Hill 3 codes. So there's there's not, like, a set number of codes it randomly picks between, it just generates it. The only caveat is that it can't pick the same number twice. That's it. In it, like, yeah, in the same number. They have to be different numbers. Well, luckily, chat's memory for you. Also, that reminds me of a few other games that I learned recently. All I do is I get my phone, take a picture of it, and just keep that up. I just have a text document. I just, like, type it out on my number pad while I'm playing. Makes sense. There are a few instances of needing to do that. Not the only time that, the, like, the note document strat's gonna come up in the speed run. Oh, you are too close to me for comfort. These guys will only attack when they're, like, right in your face. That was good. That was very good. I should also note that uh, even if you know the, like, you can't know the code in advance because it's like, it generates totally randomly. But I tested this on an emulator. If you look at your code and then load a save back to when you first get to the mining facility and put that code in, it doesn't work. The code doesn't exist until you've seen it. Uh, I, I tried a sequence break using that because it would have been, been sizable if it worked. 
because, you know, you, you could skip, like, an entire boss fight, basically, but no, it doesn't work like that. You can't do it that way. One encounter fight is good luck. That's pretty fast. Especially given that I'm now, like, level four or something. Almost level five. You do start... You do, in fact, do more damage as you your level ups roll in, meaning encounters get gradually more manageable. So what once took two clips will now only take one, which makes churning through encounters a much simpler process. There's caribou bouncing around here. If I were to pull out my hunting rifle and shoot them, I could get like four meat for my trouble. This is the only map in the whole game where caribou spawn, but there's like an in-game achievement thing for killing like 200 of them or something. So I hope you like spending like 20 hours on disc one if you want to get that. Three dudes is pretty rough, but I got all of them pretty quickly. You remember me from AGDQ. Does anyone know what he run there? You will have to be more specific. I've ran at it seven times. I think that I mean a uh, chicory from the most recent one. Yes, if, if, the, if you mean the most recent one, I ran chicory. If you mean anything else, then God, I don't know. There's grouse in this game. You can shoot them for one leap. Singular meat. I'm gonna get rid of this guy as fast as I can because he's the more threatening individual in the fight. He's dead. They're like, where's these like inflatable car dealership wacky tube dudes? They just kind of hang out in the back sometimes. That's what I think of when I see those enemies. I think of car dealership like inflatable tube men. Is that weird? No. Does anyone else see that? Yeah, once again we have to we have to we have to in fact walk all the way back up the the snowy mountain to get to the mining facility to input the code that we now know. You still can't ride the snowmobile. Eventually you'll be able to ride the snowmobile for faster travel. Oh, that's a horrid place to get a random encounter. My head's in a bush. <laughs> yeah, dude. Foliage. Oh. No, okay, that was actually a pretty good random encounter. It was one dude. Those dudes are high value. They give 15 experience a pop. And so are relatively been, uh, easy to kill. I'm having a question about the encounters. Um, mm -hmm. Can you actually move forward, or are you like locked into like, a circular rail? You're locked in place. When an encounter oh. starts, you cannot move. You can only turn. And you can't run away from an encounter either. If something, if you start a fight, you have to finish it. Oh, no. There's no run option. If, if you could run, I'd be running from everything right now. You have to win the fights. Oh, didn't manage to get it before it went underground. Rude. Oh, the rudeness. The rudeness is off the charts. Please stop shaking, Laura. I have bills to pay. <laughs> I didn't get the other guy. Oh, well. Uh, well, any day now. There we go. But that's like, that's an example of an encounter that did not go so great in terms of time. Because I didn't kill the second guy and then he burrowed under the ground. It's like, well, I'm just going to... I'll be here when you need me. Oh, that was fast. One guy? No, that's two guys. That's a two guy kind of moment. <laughs> Kenji Eno predicted speed running. Kenji Eno made a game that you have to finish in 90 minutes. Which one? The first D. Oh. It has a time limit, like a real time limit. If you do not finish the game in 90 minutes, the game just ends automatically. Do you get an ending? The bad ending, but yes. Huh. You can save anywhere. There are no explicit save points. If you just open the menu, you can save the game. A thing I will probably not do, because I like to live on the edge. 
There's no real, like, danger points for the run, is the thing. There's nothing I'd be like, oh, I need to save here in case I mess this up. It's like, no, I'm just, I'm probably good to go. Right. right. I have code. Check out this interface for putting in codes. Oh, Laura's God. big finger. Oh, God. Individually. That me of, uh... Oh, Laura, that's like overblood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it totally is like that. Is it just as awkward or is it like. It's pretty awkward, yeah. Oh, it's no. like, it's not, it's not super responsive. But okay, this is a unique segment of the game because I'm now in the first person. This is the only point of the game that works like this. I'm exploring a cave, and I have a flashlight somehow. I, you don't pick up a flashlight, so I don't know where that came from. And we have to navigate a cave system. We do this by the signs on the ceiling that gradually indicate our depth. And you do still get random encounters down here, and they're like minor dudes with pickaxes. Fortunately, I only got one, though. One is good luck. Sometimes you can get two, and that's very inconvenient. It's important not to get turned around, too, when you get random encounters, right? You'll always be set after the encounter at the original direction you were facing when the encounter started. An encounter will not turn you around. If you're moving forward, you keep moving forward. Well, this is a two-guy kind of situation. Oh, and they're on opposing sides, too. That's really awkward. I'm just going to commit to trying to rush one of them down, and if the other guy hits me in the back of the head, then so be it. Yep, sure did do that. That's my general game plan for dealing with, like, awkward enemy placements like that, is just commit to killing one of them and let the other guy bonk you in the back of the head. If you try and split your attention, what tends to happen is that both of you bonk, bo bleh, both of them bonk you in the back of the head. Anyway, this is our goal. This room here. This tiny room over here. Give me the shotgun. I'm collecting. There's a sign there that says, Notice, don't be caught. Can do. Get another first aid spray. I thought that was yellow, but it's not. Don't really need any more greens, but fine. You know, extra safety. The number of encounters you get is semi-random, I would say. Anyway, there's three lunch boxes here. The last one is the only one I care about. It's got shotgun shells in it. One of them has an enemy inside of it, so you really want to avoid that one. And let's collect some gas. Gas for our snowmobile. That was the goal of the chapter, the endeavor, was to collect gas for our snowmobile, because our snowmobile is out of gas. Now we can use the snowmobile. However, now i got to skip a few cutscenes and also get ready to rip the headphones out of my head. This is a disc transition. The multi-disc game. I'm leaning away from the microphone. There it is. Disc is soon here. Take a side. Quick, while he's changing discs, type your favorite letter. Okay. That's in. It's done. We're on disc two now. Hey. Now how often do you gold split the uh, the disc swap? <laughs> the disc change. I, I do, in fact, have a unique split for the disc change. I've had that for Galarians, and it sucks seeing myself lose like 10 seconds to a disc swap. It sucks. <laughs> Dude, RTA speedruns are great. They're terrible. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we have, we, have re we have rode our snowmobile to a completely new location on the other side of the mountain. We're going to try and use a bathroom, but the bathroom goes to the edge of a cliff. There's no bathroom there. It's just pit. And then Laura nearly falls to her death trying to go to the bathroom. And then she comes back from nearly dying. It's like Clock Tower. Like, you know the end of Clock Tower 1 where you try to open a door and it just leads to nowhere? Yeah. It's like that. And then we end up tied to a chair because there's Kimberly does that. Kimberly has tied us to the chair. So I've seen a few of these questions asked. Does D2 stand for disc 2? No. And now we're fighting evil Kimberly. She's become a plant monster. Uh, the weak point here is technically her head, but it's like really unresponsive and not very good. So like it doesn't work half the time. 
I got it there. Ow. Yeah. This, I think, is the most volatile boss fight in the game. With good reason. Because uh, trying to hit the weak point is inexact. Yeah, I definitely hit her in the head a whole bunch, and it definitely just did not react to that. That's the Kimberly boss fight for you. There we go. Blinks of low health warning me. There we go. That will do. Her weak point is more of an art than a science. It, theoretically, it's her head. In practice, it doesn't seem to work about half the time. I don't know. It's kind of whack. Also, I saw this question earlier in chat. Yes, the run is live. However, chat is pre-recorded. And that's, the, I think, the first time I get to say this this year. <laughs> chat is pre-recorded. Right. And they are. Uh, we we fought evil Kimberly, but that was a doppelganger Kimberly, and it wasn't the real Kimberly. The real Kimberly is okay. She's right here. She's fine. And then real Kimberly like passes out, and there's also a grenade behind us. I'm gonna pick that up and do that real quick. And now we're going to leave. We're just gonna let Kimberly and Janny sleep on the couch there. Janny is a character who exists. She was introduced in one of the cutscenes I skipped at the end of disc one. She's a small child. Her role in the plot is small child. That's all you gotta know. Okay, now we can leave. And now we can ride a snowmobile. Yes. Finally, fast travel, relatively speaking. Here's the problem, I can't drive. How much faster that was to get from location to location, although I've parked the snowmobile in a really inconvenient place. There we go, get inside the building. But we must solve a puzzle in order to open this facility. Check out this puzzle. I have solved the puzzle. It's a binary puzzle. It's like it's binary, but there's only like three choices, so I don't know. It exists. There it is. Kimberly's corpse is over here, but it's like a second Kimberly. That's a thing that'll keep happening. Over here on this shelf, more shotgun shells. It's imperative I collect as much shotgun shells as I can up to this point. But not so much health. I'm pretty good on health. And another binary puzzle. One. Two. Binary seven. It's nice of them, they just write the solution on the thing. And now there's a giant bell. We're going to press the giant bell. It will give us a number. I now need to remember that number because it's it, that's a unique passcode for a different location in the video game. If you hit it again, it will change the number. That was 181588, right? Yeah. And once again, that code is generated totally randomly and is unique every playthrough. In fact, if you just keep pressing the button, it'll just keep generating random codes over and over again. Alright, now that we're in disc two, the enemies get stronger, so I'm going to swap to my shotgun. Where's the... Oh, I guess if you park the snowmobile directly outside the door, it moves it. I didn't know it did that. But I kind of want to move it over here. And I'm going to be very gentle about this, because if you get the bike stuck in the corner, there isn't a way to get it back out, and you're kind of screwed. Which is not very fun, but I want these shotgun shells. Or shotgun bullets. 
Oh, good lord, that was scary because I almost got I almost got it stuck in the corner. Hey, okay, moving on. Moving on. Going places. On the snowmobile. You can still get encounters on the snowmobile. I didn't say it stopped random encounters. These beefy dudes are the reason the shotgun comes into play here. These guys have a ton of health, and we have just arrived in disc two at level five. So the fastest way to kill them by far is just hitting them with the shotgun twice. I cannot overstate that that fight would have taken like five times longer if I didn't do that. The shotgun is a, a useful tool here, but its ammo is limited and therefore has to be managed over the course of the video game. That is how the run works. And these enemies as well, I'm going to kill them using shotgun because they, they, they outpower us right now quite significantly. So the only way to sort of make up the deficit is by way of shotgun. Otherwise, they will slap us around and be generally massive nuisances. There, I've got a level up out of it, so my health is now back to full. That's also a useful reason to use the shotgun here. Oops, bumped the wall. I can't drive. I can't drive anything in real life. Never let me drive anything. Another two guy moment. Oh, you're a bit close, aren't you? Oh, rude. No, sit down. Well, it still only took four shots, so it's fine. I didn't waste any ammo. 21 experience a pop. On the way back, it's a lot safer because on the trek upwards, you gain a lot of experience. I also want to park here. You may have seen a small black dot on the ground as I ran by, or maybe you didn't because you're not like, I don't know, you don't have the game memorized. There's a grenade here. I want it. It's important. I think I'm going to get one more encounter before I hit the door. Yep, there it is. This is an unusual enemy set. Go away. I don't think I've ever actually seen that variant of like the inflatable tube guy before. Because I think it only spawns around this door. You don't have a reason to hang around very much. Oh, I'm stuck on snowmobile. I've got to walk around it. I tried to press A to open the door and it overlapped with the snowmobile. Why, why, why you have four buttons on this controller, please? Why does every Dreamcast game only use two buttons when they have like six? Anyway, moving on. Once again, we will use the code that we generated from the bell to open the door. Can't find the name of the game. It's D2. Doesn't stand for anything. It's just called D2. It's just his name. It's not Diablo 2. D2. Hey, we're now in an observatory. We are observing Tori. I don't know what that means. Uh, there's a dying plant dude in here. We're going to talk to him. And he tells us to get a flamethrower from a cabinet nearby and burn him to death. We agree to do this. It's inside this locked cabinet. Uh, Laura resolves the problem of the locked cabinet by punching it open. She punches through glass and picks the flamethrower up. I mean, and then burns I everything more games did that. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be like a puzzle. You know, you got, I have to find a locked key. You know, I got to unlock the cabinet. She punches through it. She punches through the cabinet in a scene that still takes too long to be funny. Otherwise, I would have shown it. it kind of took me off guard that she just punches through it the first time. Anyway, now we go back. We now have a flamethrower, and sadly, we can't use it in combat. It's a puzzle item. It's not classed as a weapon. All right, go figure, right? That's video games for you. Die. 
die? Why do you take three? Four? What is this behavior? I, nah. This, this guy has become invincible. I was, I'm not wasting a single more shotgun shell on that guy. Why did he take four hits? That's not supposed to happen. I disagree. Game is wrong. Moving on with my life. I should take two at maximum. And I'm level seven now. That means I can actually swap back to the submachine gun to conserve my shotgun shells for disc three. Because now that I've got a few level ups under my belt, I'm stronger. And thus the submachine gun becomes more viable, although it doesn't become so viable that dealing with two of these guys is an appealing proposition. Oops. It should still be okay, but that's like a rough enemy set to get. Yikes, says I. Maybe I should have stuck to the shotgun. Yeah, you see how I was shooting that guy constantly using all of my bullet and he still just kind of walked up and hit me in the face? That's D2's combat. You will just get hit sometimes. That was pretty bad. Oh well. That's RPGs for you. That probably would have gone smoother if I got a different set of enemies. Kind of, I just wasn't expecting to get two of the big bulky dudes. That's a very late encounter. But, see, this is a much more convenient encounter. It's one guy. A real one guy moment. And the one guy is not hard to deal with at all. What was that encounter when I needed it? Leveling in this game increases your attack power, as in your bullets just do more damage, and it increases your maximum health. I'm okay, if you say so, video game. I don't believe you, but fine. Oh my god, forget it. Get back on the f get back on the snowmobile. Drive. Thrilling. D two. It's janky. Anyway. Now that we have the flamethrower, we can access the underground compartment in this facility that we previously couldn't get to because it's frozen shut. This is the use of the flamethrower. It's not a combat weapon. It's used to open a door. Hmm. This thing. And now we find a bio, like, what is it? Botanical research lab underground. But it's cold down here. And there's some information about Laura's family written on the board. And then she gets locked in uh, and freezes to death. That's not a joke. She's dead now. Oh. Disc three. So why are there so many discs? I don't know. I didn't make the game. Well, I, okay, let me actually answer that properly. It's because it's full of voice acting that I'm skipping. Oh. But like I said, it's like several hours of, like, people talking at each other. But now we're in disc three. Laura died, but she reincarnates and reappears as, like, a, out of the sky on top of this guy's car. His name is Parker. Is it because he parked his car? Why are we friends? He says these things to me every day. <laughs> That's not even the worst one. I have to put up with this every day. <laughs> okay, don't pick up the grenade yet, otherwise you can't pick up the shotgun shells because it's a free look item. Okay, now we're in disc two, and this is someone else's house entirely. This is not Parker's house, this is just where Parker has been staying while everything's been going wrong. Uh, Laura died and reincarnated or something. That happened. That totally just happens. Like, she she actually just dies and reincarnates, but she gets better. It's fine. It's not even the only time that'll happen. Uh, you need to try, try and check upstairs. You knock on the door. There's, like, a reclusive musician up there who tells you to go away. So we go away. But you do, in fact, have to check that the musician exists. And 
now we need to try and talk to Kimberly again. Not Parker, just Kimberly. She's the very important one here. So we try and talk to Kimberly, and then Laura decides she's very tired and goes to check on Janny, who is sleeping and is also here this whole time. We are shown a scene of someone in like a black cloak walking up a mountain with a giant red eye in it. The mountain is called Death Mountain. That's just what it's called. We're gonna go there later. And now we can get on with our lives. We can actually start exploring the surrounding new area of Disc 3. Once again, I'm going to swap to the shotgun because the enemies here receive a power boost again now that we have immediately gone into Disc 3. So we're a little underleveled right now because, you know, RPG speedruns. Hence, we're going to use a stronger weapon until we can get some levels under our belt. And another thing that will happen that will make it easier for us to deal with all of these encounters. But for now, it's shotgun. Oh, actually, there might be a walking TV around here. No, nope, didn't spawn in. I'm not going to explain that sentence, because it might come up again later, and I'll explain it if it does come up again later. Oh, that's a rough draw. Three big dudes! Uh, you hate to see it. Yeah, that's not very nice. That's very unnice, in fact. Oh, he didn't die in two hits either. Very unnice. How'd I hit the guy in the back? What is this musical chairs nonsense? Oh, he did... Wait, is he dead? Who's dead? Who's dying here? I'm confused. Well, they're gone now. Whatever. That should give me lots of experience. Yep, nice 60. Instantly leveling up. You'll level up very quickly at the start of disc 3. As long as you use the shotgun. If you try and use the submachine gun, encounters will take forever and you'll get pasted. You'll burn through your healing supplies very quickly. What's D2? This game. It's called D2. I don't know how to explain it any better than that. It's that's just that's just what it's called. It doesn't it doesn't stand for anything, it doesn't mean anything. That's just what it's called. I think I'm only gonna get one encounter on the way to the church, which is very good RNG, because I don't think it can spawn anymore from here. Touch wood. This isn't wood, but I touched it. Yeah, only one encounter. That's very good luck. Getting only one encounter from musician's house to priest's house? Good. Very nice. It's random, but only, like, it's... Generally, you only get one, but you can get two, and it sucks if you get two. It... I've even had three once, which is very rude. But there is, like, a certain sanity check applied to the encounter rate. Like, it can't just tick over all the time, you know? And there's also, like, a flaw. You're always going to get one. I've never seen zero. Anyway, we've spoken to Priest twice. He tells us some vague-sounding gibberish. And that's our lot. We have achieved a story event for that. Like, a flag has been set. We can make progress. Is there a D one? Yes, it was just called D. It's called D the video game on Steam. Open open Steam and, like, type it in. You'll, f you'll find D the video game. That's the first D. It's a point-and-click adventure game. It is nothing like D2 at all. Ooh, one guy moment. That's good luck. Although this camera angle is not really doing me any favors. I got hit before I even had control. That is incredibly whack. Get out of here. That's not fair at all. I got hit before I had control. I'm salty. I'm very salty. Literally before Laura had even pulled her gun up, I got hit. Do you mind? It's because the encounter spawned on the stairs. I'll tell you this for this game. Encounters can spawn anywhere, right? Which is novel, because it means the play field can be anything when you get into a fight. But it also means enemies can spawn in very interesting places when elevation gets involved. Ah, see, there's the more traditional two encounter. Another one guy moment. These, like, the encounter sets are good, but the enemies that are spawning... No, that's pretty good. Only one shot from the shotgun. That's pretty fast. 30 experience is a nice reward as well for one shotgun bullet. I'm calling it a shotgun bullet. I don't care how wrong I am.
went back to the musician's house. Are there different difficulty levels? No, there is only just the mode. It's just the game. That's all you get. I'm sorry. Oop, nope, wrong button. Only move and look in certain directions. But now we're going to go upstairs because the musician's room is now open to us. Parker's gone. Don't worry about him. It doesn't matter. Janie is still hanging around. Again, don't worry about her. She can look after herself. We can now go in the musician's room. It's time for my favorite kind of puzzle in a horror game. But first, we'll pilfer some nonsense from this shelf. More shotgun shells for my purposes. Get this yellow first aid spray. It heals 50. And now we're going to do a piano puzzle. Everyone loves piano puzzles. I didn't do it correctly. Oh! If you didn't hear what the puzzle was, because it happens in like literally th like a second, it played a very brief. Doodle -doodle -doodle. You have to mimic that. Wait, is it like exactly the same tempo too, or? No, you can play it one note at a time, but still, you have to mimic the thing, and I I I have no sense for it. I have to write down the numbers. Anyway, we've opened the secret room and we find a semi-automatic rifle and a key. But the semi-automatic rifle is the more important thing. The semi-automatic rifle is basically a strictly better version of the submachine gun we've been using for most of the game. It's the power boost we need to sort of get through most of Disc 3. It's, uh, it's rough going in Disc 3 until you pick up this weapon. And like the submachine gun, it has infinite ammo, so it's just once you have it, the submachine gun is useless. Although it's not replaced, it's still in the inventory. It still occupies space. But, okay. Now we have a better weapon. We can start making some headway. Change to our new and improved submachine gun plus, as the game calls it. There are only four weapons in this game, and I'm not going to pick up the fourth because it's useless. So this this is our weapon loadout for the rest of the game. We have our infinite ammo submachine gun plus, and our shotgun, which I pull out when the power level sort of starts to get ahead of me, which happens at the start of disc two, the start of disc three, and pretty much all of disc four. Now that we have a key from the musician's safe, we're going to head to a new location because we can go in now. We have a key. We have a key for a place. Ugh, three dude moment. Maybe I should stick to shotgun. Oh well, I've committed to this decision. Now it takes too long to pull out the shotgun. Ouch. Why would you turn like that? Oh, barrel roll! What a move! He's pretty good. Oh, good lord, I almost died. That was kind of scary. I probably should have just used the shotgun. Oh, well. The single shotgun bullet. Probably should have used the shotgun. That was unlucky. Normally, swapping back to the submachine gun is fine, but also normally you don't get three dudes, three of the beefy dudes in one encounter. Yikes. But that's fine. I pick up another first aid spray there to replace the one I just used. That's my safety. But actually, there's a quick question as well. Uh, does D2 play, like, any game that you can, like, relate it to? Not really. Like, I think the closest analog is Parasite Eve, but the combat doesn't really work anything like this. Right. But it kind of has the same sort of, like, enemies in arenas, and you, you use gun, and it's kind of horror-themed. Got that 
whole aspect going for it. I definitely know a lot of the Dreamcast horror games are kind of unique in that way, where there's not really a lot of games quite like them. There's definitely not much like D2. I will say that in its favor, D2 is not a boring game in terms of how it's like laid out and structured and presented. Yeah, the walk animation is interesting because it's constantly trying to deal with shifting terrain. Like everything sort of, every the ground has like weird contours and what have you. Let me, let me tell you, the, the, the challenge of how to get a character to animate walking up, up a slope is still a struggle to this day. Don't go underground. I'm like, I'm preventing him from going underground by just getting those little shots in every time. Like, getting him on the top of the head. I think I'm not going to reload in time for that one, though. Disappointing. There you go. These enemies are much easier to deal with with the Submachine Gun Plus. And they reward reasonable experience. I've now gained two levels in a very short span of time. Can you go out of bounds or skip anything? Uh, you, I skip some story events that are not necessary to advance the game. Some of them just don't, like, are not required, technically. Like, I'm, I'm actually, I have bypassed a number of events by going directly to Martha's house straight after I got the key, instead of, like, talking around first. So you could call that a skip, but in terms of, like, out of bounds, no, I haven't found anything yet. Hey, we go to Martha's house. Martha is a woman who wears an eye mask. But otherwise, she serves us tea and is perfectly pleasant, and then we leave. Do people sometimes mention you look quite a bit like musician comedian Tim Minchin? No, but that's the funniest thing anyone has compared me to so far. I will take that. I like that one. Alright, now that we have met Martha, we can go back to the priest place. This is a lot of sort of like running back and forth between locations to activate story flags. It's a little unfortunate, given that we have not unlocked the fast travel for disc 3 yet. Oh, hello. Aim better, stupid. There you go. I'm gonna get hit. Oh, kicked in the face. We traded, that's fine. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. We traded, but I won the trade. 60 experience. We have moved significantly a significant distance from where the plane crashed at this point. We have ridden on a snowmobile, like, through the mountains some considerable distance. We're in a completely different location now, but it is all still a snowy mountain that sucks. And we would like to not be on the snowy mountain. That's our, vi that's our like, overarching goal for the whole game is escape the snowy mountain. We go about this by meeting strange characters and having them spout their entire life's philosophy at us and then dying and they tend to leave you a key when they die. Oh, there we go. Funny character spawned. Weird dude. I'm going to lose some time to walk over to look at that. Ah, oh, three guy moment again. This is not the nicest set of enemy encounters you could possibly draw. I also didn't even hit half those shots, which does not help my case. But my level ups have made this much easier. Yep, didn't even get hit. That was fortunate. A nice level up, now I'm level 11. All right, observe the strange dude. Look at him. Look at her. Fabulous. That happens <laughs> if you have save data from a previously cleared file of D2 on your VMU. There are two VMUs plugged into my controller right now. I don't know which one has the data on it. 
those are characters from one of Kenji Eno and his company Warping's previous games. I forget which one. It has a really hard to say name. It did not get released outside of Japan. The, the information was on Japanese Wikipedia. Can't remember now though. It's like a first person sumo wrestling game that he made. I think that's where those characters are from. You can change weapons in the middle of a fight, yes. It just, it, there's like an animation for putting it down and taking it back out, so it like, it loses time and if generally you're gonna get hit for doing it. So I, I would like to not swap weapons if I can help it. All right, back to the priest. We talk to the priest, now that we've met Martha. He tells us again some vague mumbo jumbo, and then we leave again. If you're noticing a pattern, well, don't, because that's actually the last of the random mumbo-jumbos that we're going to get from the priest. But you have to do these things. You have to do these things to advance the game. I spent many hours of my life figuring out exactly the exact minimum of how many times you need to walk to these places and talk to these people to give birth to progress. You definitely have to do this. Does this tend to be an NG Plus run? No, there's, like, well, I guess so. But no, like, actual game information is carried between, like... Th this game has no New Game Plus feature, basically. Like, you can't carry levels or ammo or inventory or anything like that. That only happens just because the system file on my VMU recognizes... Oh, you've played the game before. Spawn a weird dude in on your next playthrough. <laughs> it has no effect on the run. It's just there. Just a thing that appears. It's different every playthrough. Sometimes it's a TV rather than whatever that was. Oh... The character changes, there's like a, there's like three, I think, that appear. Does this game do the weird thing that I know a uh, lot of PS2 games do? Where it's, um, if you haven't played the game at least once, you can't skip cutscenes? You can skip them on a new playthrough. Okay, cool. It's just, you have to double tap B. That's the only requirement, Is it's a, it's a double tap. You don't need a completed playthrough in order to skip cutscenes, which is very handy. Can you hunt the weird dude? No, you cannot. I tried. I did. It'd be really interesting if you could. I wonder what kind of reward you'd get, but no, they're, they're incorporeal as far as the game cares. Just so can't manipulate spawns like with Final Fantasy. I have not found a way to do so, no. There are many dudes up in my grill right now. This is not ideal. There you go, level 12. I've become stronger yet again. Is running the first D possible? Yes, I don't do it though. Some people do. It's a point-and-click adventure game. You can run it like any other point-and-click adventure game. Now, the question of RNG manipulation is, like, a vaguely interesting one, but also you can't just sort of, like, do it. Like, I can't just pull that out of nowhere, you know? I need to sort of, like, really go in deep and figure out the true nature of the game's random generation to sort of suss that out, and that's, like, a very tall endeavor. I do have good news. Uh, apparently, there actually is variance, and it's not just a tied world record for D1, D the game. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a primarily FMV game, right? So a lot of the animations are going to be canned, so it, the runs tend to come out to be quite a similar length, all other things being equal. Yeah, looks like world record's about a 30.05 for D1. Uh, hang on, sorry, let me check my notes. Okay. I had to make sure I was doing the right thing there, because otherwise I would walk all the way to a place and then realize, oh, I've come here too early, oops, walk all the way back, waste like four minutes. You would all hate me. Okay, we went upstairs, we went back to the secret room again, and the musician appeared, and he was like all gross and plant-like and stuff, and he tries to kill Laura. And then Parker comes in and shoots them. So we've seen another event. 
and now we're going back to the priest's house. This is the longest disc in the game for what it's worth. Why is this game the same franchise as D? You mean they're completely different games? Well, they're made by the same people. They're, they're part of the D franchise because the person who made them said so. And who are we to question Kenji Eno? I'm thinking about that comment that said, why did we hear the Halloween theme after every... Someone said that like minutes ago now. Why did we hear the Halloween theme after every fight? I don't know. It's an odd choice, isn't it? Enemy Zero runs would be insane. I've thought about that, actually. I'm engaging on a, on a very casual basis with chat today. Exciting. I've thought about that. The problem is that you can't skip cutscenes in Enemy Zero. That's why I haven't done it. Also, on that note, I just kind of add more into it. And just to pry a little bit more, because I know you've ran a bunch of games. You've been on the show a bunch of times. You've ran a bunch of games. Um... And this one's definitely one of the weirder ones. What would you say the weirdest game you ran is, though? Oh dear, the weirdest game I've ran? That's a tall question. It is. I know you've ran some weird games. I think the most inexplicable game I run is probably a game called Revelations 2012. You it's, did that it, on the, uh, I think it was our uh, one of the other Hotfix shows we have here, the Awfully Silly one, right? Did I do it for Awfully Silly? I, I don't. Think I think I did it. For, so. I, think, I think I did it for Big Bad Gamathon, not awfully silly. But what did I do what for did awfully you... silly? I can't remember now. Is the problem? Let me what, see. What if did I, I can do? Check. I should be able to check. I do have some information. Of the, I did. I did Revelation Twenty Twelve for something. Anyway, the priest is dead now. I picked up a key off his body. There's a bomb inside this chest. Like it's just a time bomb. I have a bomb now. The other cabinet contains a handgun. I'm not picking it up. That's the fourth weapon. The handgun is useless. I should have a pin of show. Oh, you ran Seven Mansions. Seven Mansions was awfully silly, right? Yeah. Revelations 2012 was Big Bad Gamathon. Uh, Revelations 2012 is like a bad Aztec themed Left 4 Dead knockoff with kind of poor optics, uh, but one of the strategies involves pressing the bespoke dancing hotkey. There is a key that makes the character dance, it's mapped to a unique button. It causes gravity to not work properly. Oh. It's great. That's probably the weirdest game I run. Like, by a country mile, Revelations 2012 is probably the weirdest game I run. It's free on Steam, so, like, you know it's no budget. So, I run a lot of weird games, but I run mostly, like, console-published Japanese games. Ow. I'm gonna get hit by two dudes instead of one. Two hits for the price of none. Okay. I now have the bomb, and the place I'm heading to now is back to Martha's house again to start the boss fight of Disc 3. Or well, not the boss fight, it's just one boss fight. But first, another dude has appeared. I've never seen this dude before. Look at this dude. Ooh, that's a unique dude. Hang on. I'm totally messing around here, but I've never seen such a dude before. What a unique dude. Fascinating. Okay, moving on with the game. I hadn't seen that one before. I wanted to take a closer look. That's a new dude. I didn't pull the trigger. That's just the only way to get a closer look. Shoot a cat in cold blood. <laughs> Look how the dude's just like sitting there in the back. Hey there, man. How you doing? And also, during this combat section, and since we did talk about some of the other games you've done, I guess a follow up question leading into things uh, do you have any, any other fun future speed game plans? <laughs> uh. I do, actually, but I'm wondering if I want to say it live or not, because if I say it live, people will hold me to it, and they will desperately hold me to it. I'm going to do it, though. People are being good sports. I kind of, I want to try and speedrun a dating sim. Dating sim? I want to speedrun Tokimeki Memorial. 
feel like I know that game. Yeah, if you've seen Tim Rogers' like six hour video about it, maybe you've heard of like maybe you've heard of it from that. I have not. I think I may have heard through us. Some video. some people in chat may have heard of it, so I'm I'm going off what they might know. He's a reasonably popular like YouTube guy who makes very bizarre long stream of consciousness videos about Japanese games. And I imagine he's where a lot of people have heard of Konami's seminal dating sim franchise from. I wanna try speedrunning that. And that would be a unique twist. I want to try that. It's been on my bucket list for a, a long time, actually. I've actually, I played that game before Tim Rogers even made a video about it. I am a Japanese speaker, in case that's not clear. Like, that's why I can do these sorts of things. Needing, you don't need to know Japanese at all to run like the Japanese version of D2 like I'm doing here. Like, all the text is in English. It does have full Japanese voice acting though, and this game has no subtitles, annoyingly. In either language. Ooh, got him before he borrowed. Good effort. But I don't know if I'll get around to it immediately, but I always have like 6,000 games on my like speedrun bucket. You know how it is. I'm sure you know how it yeah. is in Dices. Yeah. We, we both have like 6,000 things on our like speedrun bucket list at any one time, and you kind of do them in a vaguely random order. Usually, whatever seems most accessible. I already have like five already on the top of my deck for even the beginning of the year that I wanted to do last year, but then I don't do last year because I forgot. It's how they get you. Yeah, I, I do in fact like literally keep a list. I have it written down <laughs> of like stuff I want to try working on next. And I like iterate through the list. I'll technically I was supposed to be running ill bleed all the way back from like I think like 2018, but originally I was still trying to get a hold of that copy, huh? Well, I have a copy technically, and I was going to buy it for my friend at the next in-person PD. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still waiting. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, here, we're on the boss now. A boss. This guy has a name. I forget what it is, though, like, sincerely. Is he already dead? Ah! Ow. Wasted. That sucks. He's a big plant dude with a plant weakness spot. I just gotta kind of shoot that a lot and hope for the best. Oh, he's spawning bugs. I'm getting owned by it. Oh, I hit his weak point there. That was lucky. Hitting this guy's weak point is a very inexact science. I'm not completely sure where it is, honestly. You know, as if to taunt me, by the way, do you know SH2 Lock actually knows a lot about how D2 works? <laughs> he was in my chat the other day, like, telling me, ah, oh, the boss's weak point is, like, here and here and here. It's got this much health and this does this much damage. I'm like, how do you know all this? Why do you know every game I play? What a guy. Is the weak point. Oh, that was good. Nice boss fight. Took a while, but we got there eventually. And now Laura dies again. She approaches the defeated boss, and then it wakes up and it kills her. So Laura has now died. Laura has now died twice, as far as the story is concerned. At this point, it may as well be died to. <gasps> it could. Oh, on rails, movement exploration. All right, you have to talk to Parker before you leave, and oh my god, do not forget to talk to Parker before you leave. It's so painful if you forget. It's like eight minutes in the crapper. Anyway, Laura has now died twice. We reincarnated a second time. That just happens. And now our goal is to head to the bridge. We found a bomb earlier in a cabinet, right? I kind of, I glossed over that, but I think I did bring it up. Uh, and then we programmed the bomb because we're going to blow up the door blocking the bridge at the end of the mountain because we want to cross the bridge. So we're going to blow up the gate blocking it. Uh, however, we need to get there. But now we can use the snowmobile for this purpose. So that's lovely. 
However, the snowmobile does not mean we're immune to encounters. In fact, you still get them, and you get them about the same rate, even. I think it's based on distance rather than, like, time or number of steps. That's why I say, uh, oh, this is a hairy situation. My health didn't even get refilled. Re dying doesn't refill your health. Interesting. Okay, so passing out does restore your health. Dying doesn't. Good to know. That's how... That's how the metaphysics of the scenario work, apparently. That was a nightmare. I've got a level up out of it, so there's my health back again. Lovely, lovely. All right, what was I saying? That's why uh, the question. That's why I keep saying encounters are random, but not that random, because it seems to be based on distance covered rather than like step count or just sort of randomly rolling every so often. You know, it seems to happen like every so much ground you cover, and you're going to cover roughly the same amount of ground in a speed run no matter what you do, because you're trying to go fast. You know, you're always taking the same kind of paths. So you'll generally always get this roughly the same number of encounters-ish. There is variance, but that's what I mean when I say it's random, but it's not that random, at least in terms of how many you get. Semi-random, something like that. I mean, random is random as far as speedruns is concerned. The randoms could be minor, but if it makes a difference, then it's just random. And make no mistake, the randomness of the enemy encounter makes a very large difference to how D2 runs go. Uh, my PB for this game is 157, like one hour, 57 minutes, like on the dot. Uh, and it got quite lucky with enemy encounters, but it's not perfect, not at all, not by any means. It's still a bit, um, you could play much braver in terms of like not picking up health items and so on. So hey, if you want to pick up this game, I'm, I'm basically advertising that my time is beatable. Uh, where's the shotgun shell? It's on the ground here somewhere. There it is. I was a hair too early there. I do still want shotgun shells for later, even though I'm using the submachine gun for now. Get shotgun bullet. Back on the mobile we go. Yes, the enemies are in fact mooing like cows. No, I do not know why. They just, they do that. They make delightful sploosh noises when they get shot as well. I think that's the ring menu sound effect. A classic of Dreamcast horror speedrunning. They run in packs. Yes, now we are approaching the bridge, which we are going to try to blow up with the bomb, or at least we're going to plan to blow it up with the bomb. One guy? That's a good encounter. No, two... Oh, I spoke too soon. It's a two-guy kind of situation. So that's a pretty easy enemy set because that guy has, like, no health. Oh, but it would have been so fast if it didn't burrow back underground. That's disappointing. That was a lucky enemy set, but I didn't get so lucky with actually hitting. <laughs> Geometry made that very unfortunate. But that's okay. For now, anyway, it's okay. I wish to debark here. Well, there are items to collect. Get me a red first aid spray. It restores 100 health. And this Granada. I've now stockpiled about nine grenades that I haven't used. They will be used in due time, rest assured. We find Kimberly's snowmobile here. There are two snowmobiles in play now. Kimberly's and mine. So we got all the way to the bridge, we met Kimberly at the bridge, and we're like, hmm, we could blow up this bridge with the bomb. And then we go back to the house, we are teleported back to the house, fortunately, and we start setting up the bomb. And Kimberly goes to blow up the bridge. And then Parker panics and is like, oh, I set the timer on the bombs wrong. Kimberly's gonna die if you don't rush over there and tell her to get, like, to just throw the bomb. So now we gotta ride all the way back to the bridge, but now there's a time limit. So do the thing you just did, but now with a number in the corner of the screen. Okay. Uh, notably, you, there are also no enemy encounters during this section, and also no music. <laughs> For some reason, this section just does not have music. I sort of feel like this is meant to have music, but, um... No?
it adds to the stress. Five minutes is also a very generous time limit to do this in. Motorcycle, motorcycle. Chase! Motorcycle, motorcycle. Chase. It's not a motorcycle. Oh well. Yeah, I always accidentally call them jet skis. <laughs> That'll work. Anyway, we got there with three minutes and 55 seconds to spare. We have saved Kimberly's life from nearly blowing herself up with a bomb because it was set to the wrong timing. And now Kimberly and Parker are mad at each other because, you know, Kimberly almost got killed because Parker made a mistake setting up the bomb. So we're going to go and comfort Kimberly by speaking to her. She's just being sad in bed. Mood. We also go to bed and have, like, a vision. Of some description. And now we skip a bunch of cutscenes. Parker goes to blow up the bridge. Uh, and does it by way of blowing himself up in the process. And Kimberly then also decides to blow herself up as well. So they're both dead now. And now we're back at the bridge. And now our goal is drive back to the house. So we were at the bridge, and then we were back at the house, and then it made us drive to the bridge again. And then now that we drove to the bridge, it took us back to the house, and now it teleports us back to the bridge, and tasks us to drive back to the house. Yeah. Yes. I understand perfectly. That guy got all up in my face. But so far, the status of the plot is that all our friends are dead and we are very sad about it. There are two dudes here. That is far too many dudes. I like the bulky dudes too. That's not a very fortunate enemy encounter. But the second dude is just kind of flexing in the corner, so you know what? He can have as much fun as he likes. Sometimes they do that. Sometimes they just kind of, like, hang out. I feel like that guy's like... <laughs> he was just kind of doing push-ups there. He wasn't even really trying to attack me. You kill them anyway. I, I have to. I can't proceed unless I don't. I kind of felt like he was just sort of like gym spotting for his buddy. You know, I heard my Dreamcast rev up for an encounter. That's a funny quirk of running this game on real hardware, by the way, is that I can actually hear when an encounter's about to start because the disk drive makes a noise. I'm sure, I'm sure anyone who's played a turn-based RPG on... A disc console knows what I mean by that. Maybe you don't. The kids of today don't know what that is, do they? Oh no! Oh man. I'm, gonna, I'm, t I'm becoming old and annoying live on air on purpose. Oh, hello. I'm inside the floor. That was interesting. No, D2 is not in fact Diablo 2. It's a game that's called D2. Fun fact, we looked this up, by the way, but right before the uh, the run started, uh, D2 predates Diablo 2, so Diablo 2 is, is the it came of D2. It came out first. That's a fun fact. I wonder if D1 came out before Diablo 1. I don't know. I'm gonna look it, it up. I feel like it probably did. The first D is really old. Uh, I know D1 was 95, Diablo 1 was 96, but well, yeah, D is the original franchise. Although no, they're the... not at all related, they just had a letter D in them. No, this is not a sweary game. This is a game made by Kenji Eno. That's not even the first time I've heard that question, which is really bizarre. Oh, good lord, don't do that. I almost crashed the snowmobile into a wall, and that would have been tragic. Oh, 
obviously Destiny 2. Although I do have to wonder how many people picked on and are enjoying this game after expecting Diablo 2. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. I wasn't, I, that was not my intent. I just like D2 and I think it's you, an interesting you couldn't, game. You couldn't stop it if you wanted to. Do you know how often I get that on my own stream about this game? It's like, I thought you were playing Diablo 2, mate. And it's like, no, playing D2 for the Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> Like, I can't, I, there is no way to explain that any better than how we are currently explaining it. it is, it's not D2's fault that some other popular game happens to, like, have the same letter in its title. Anyway, doing a boss fight now. We're fighting Martha. We met her once before. She now has wings and tentacles and what have you. Which is not very nice of her. We just need to shoot her in the head. Unfortunately, it's another case where the weak point kind of doesn't take some majority of the time. Stop that. Yeah. I definitely hit her in the head. It doesn't stop it from... Not responding to that information. That's D2's combat for you. Weak point, head. Doesn't... There we go. The first bullet came out there, that worked. Martha did give us a cup of tea earlier, and then she turned out to be evil. Or sort of became infected with, like, the plant monster virus going on or whatever. Plays a violin, flies around, shoot her in the head a bunch. The tea lady is now dead. And we are moving on to disc four. I'm not ready to change the disc. Oh no, where's my fourth disc? I'm mashing to skip cutscenes as hard as I can over here, dude. But I'm like bent over so I can open the disc tray. There's a lot of cutscenes at the end of this disc, huh? We're crossing the bridge. This for Disco Iko Ireru. Okay, disc four in. My headphones hang on. <laughs> I've ruined everything in the pursuit of disc four. Okay, we've crossed the bridge that Kimberly and Parker both blew up with their own bodies, and we've arrived at a laboratory, because there's always, like, a laboratory at the end of horror games. It's tradition. Uh, and these are all extremely long-winded info dumps about, like, Laura's history and, like, biogenetics and stuff. Like, Laura's a clone, basically. Kind of. Vaguely. Sort of. See about clone technology, like she's she's a clone of sorts. What happened in the skip scenes? A whole lot of nothing, to be perfectly honest with you. But anyway, now we're going to fight what I call the visual symbolism boss. See if you can figure out why. Very nice. And that's that, boss. Let us not speak of this any further. That was our mother that we killed. Our mother was like, became an AI robot type person of some description there for a moment. And in this cutscene, we're now in just sort of a hut at the base of Death Mountain, 
Uh, Jani melts. She melts. She becomes a puddle and disappears into the ether. She's gone now. I'm also going to sleep in this bed purely for, like, marathon safety reasons, because I want to... That gives me my health back, basically. That's all that does. And now, our only goal for Disc 4 is to get to the top of Death Mountain. That's it. That's all you have to do. This is essentially a final dungeon type situation. And Death Mountain is full of death. You will be shocked to learn. First aid spray red, very handy. This is where all the grenades I've been stockpiling come in handy. So, as a question for, I guess, I don't really know who this helps, but casually, what level would you be by the time you actually get here? Uh, probably not that much higher, honestly. Maybe a few, because you'd get like... Uh... Oh, missed completeness. Shocking. Probably not that much higher. The level cap in this game is not very high. It kind of converges at a certain point. Because I was about to say, I, I imagine, you know, it's always interesting to see the difference in casual play and uh, speedrunning, but the amount of people uh, who probably casually play D2 in the chat right now, and even on the stream, you can probably count within two hands. Yeah. Uh, to I that, think... I'll say as well, um, uh, for the, anyone who's a D2 fan and was uh, excited for D2 today, there you go. Okay, so once you get two enemies in an encounter, this is my rubric for getting through Death Mountain because all the enemies are bullet sponges and hit really hard. If there's more than one enemy in the fight, throw a grenade. That's what a grenade does. You win. No questions asked. I'm level 16, right? I think the level cap is 30. And I would wager a casual player is probably more likely to be like level 20 or something by the time they get here, so not like that much further up, but... Okay, when there's one dude in the fight, swap to the shotgun to conserve your grenades, because you don't have, like, that many. You'll, you'll get into way more than eight fights on your way up Death Mountain. That's my, that's my rubric. When there's two dudes in the fight, lob a grenade. When there's one dude in the fight, pull out the shotgun. Because you'll kill it relatively quickly with the shotgun. And you generally hope that you just, you reach the end by the time you run out of grenades and shotgun shells. That's how it works. The resource routing is such that this is generally the case, although there's wiggle room because obviously I can't predict what the encounters will contain. But otherwise, disc four is essentially one very large climb up a mountain full of things that are very hard to kill. Like that's a two dude moment. Let's throw a grenada. Boom! The pro strat, by the way, when you throw a grenade is to not look at the explosion while you throw the grenade. Hence why I've turned around, because it produces lag. Cool, girls. Don't look at explosions. sort of stretch that I'm walking through here, it actually cannot produce a random encounter. If it seems like I'm getting through pretty far without getting one, that's normal. For some reason, that sort of narrow stretch can't generate an encounter, but it can now. We're about at the place where it's going to give me one. Okay, maybe I am actually getting pretty far without an encounter. There you go. Ooh, three dude moment. No, absolutely not. That's a grenade moment. Pure grenade moment. Three dudes. Having none of that, me. Collect me another red first aid spray. I'm piling these more for safety reasons than anything. I think I have far more than I need at this point, but that's okay. It's much better to have too many than too few. Pick up another grenade. Our instant win button for the final section. Mm -hmm. Oh, multi-dude. Multi-dude! Multi-dude!
You kind of just have to wait for the grenade to go off, and sometimes enemies can, like, sneak a hit in before that happens. Level up. The level ups aren't that important at this point, but it's just nice to have the health refill, I guess. Oh, hidden first aid spray. I didn't mean to pick that up, but okay. It was hiding in bush. Ooh, that's late. Multi dude, multi dude, multi. Oh no, single dude. All the single dudes. Rudeness. Oh, I threw off my aim really badly too. It's gonna take three hits. Oh no, I didn't. Never mind. Single dude is good luck. Because obviously it's a fast encounter. And it preserves grenades. What does D2 mean? Nothing. It's just the name of the game. This is like the most commonly asked question whenever I play this game. There's nothing to do with the game itself. It's like, what's the game name? Is it Diablo 2? It's like, no, it's, D2 is just what it's called. That's just the name of the game. <laughs> it, it does not stand for it. Okay, actually it does stand for something, but that's not important. It's not like the name of the game is short for something. Single dude moment again, that's lucky. If I run low on grenades, as in I run out of grenades, I am just gonna start shotgunning dudes because that's the that's the only option if you run out. And you will run out. You will you will you generally always run out of grenades by the end of Death Mountain, but that's fine, because this is the last part of the game. Only the first D is short for D no Shokutaku. D2, like, this is a Japanese copy of D2, and D2's Japanese name is... Get ready for it. D2. The real question is, why do they only make D2 on the Dreamcast, while D1 is seemingly, like... What, on 3DO, PS1, PC? That I, actually, I actually know the answer to that question, funnily enough. Uh, it's because Kenji Eno and Sega had a pretty tight partnership. Oh. So the story goes is that when... I'm going to tell you a story. This is a story time about development. The first D, uh, Sony did not treat the first D very well. And Kenji Eno was running basically an independent game studio before that was really a viable commercial strategy. So Sony did not produce enough copies for D to meet, like, orders. And Kenji Eno was upset about it. And because Kenji Eno had a bit of a rock star personality, there's an infamous story about how when he announced his next game, which was Enemy Zero, which is like sort of the middle game in the D series, he announced the end of the Enemy Zero trailer had a PlayStation logo that slowly morphed into a Sega Saturn logo live on the E3 trade floor. Uh, sadly, no surviving footage of this exists, but multiple sources confirm that's a real thing that he did. Uh, he had the Sega president at the time crash the stage and say, Welcome to Sega! He did that. Uh, and that is why D2 became a Dreamcast game, because by that point he was like... He was he was friends with people at Sega, basically. Sony, Sony did not treat their port of D very well. He basically told them to get lost and went to be good friends with Sega. That was, that's the story. And that's why D2 became a Dreamcast game. There's a middle step there. It was originally planned to be a Panasonic M2 game, if you can believe that, but that console got canned, and so it got reworked into a Dreamcast game, but that middle step actually isn't very important. But it is a thing that happened. You know, I still have two grenades. This is incredibly good luck. Am I gonna get one more encounter, or am I just good to go? I might just be good to go. Also, that reminded me to check, and that's relevant, because Punchy, do you know I'm something of a Sega friend myself? Sega still follows me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> they don't follow me on Twitter. I like their I don't know why too. they follow me on Twitter, but they do. Okay, I got to the top of Death Mountain with two grenades left in stock, which I've never had happen before. That was 
quite good luck going up Death Mountain. We're on the final boss now. We're in the final boss. And also, this boss is a photosensitivity warning. Like, seriously. Thank you for that. Like, if you are photosensitive, do not look at this. I am not joking. It gets real bad real oh, fast. Oh, God, that is some siren level. Uh, it, it gets worse. It gets, it gets worse. And then it gets better. But it, get, it gets worse before it gets better. Why is it always the final boss from that, uh, what's that game? Kirby, the crystal one. One of the, you're at, you think I know? No, actually. It looks like <laughs> a Kirby final boss. <laughs> do, do I look like I know what a Kirby is? Maybe. I play D2 on Sega Dreamcast. I don't know what Kirby is. Okay, so we're fighting the final boss. We're just kind of shooting him in the eyes. Uh, we're getting into cutscenes where he's sort of like taunting Laura. He's going, ah, ha, 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 you cannot beat me, Laura. And like, that's that's sort of the sum total of the interactions here. And the flashing stuff gets more intense. You know, I remember when we were fighting a plant chick earlier and that fell about right. And now it just sort of looks like, I, I see the bee not afraid. It looks like a biblical angel. That, I think it might actually be something like that. All right, now the photosensitivity has ended for the time being because the boss has stolen our sight. We cannot <laughs> see anymore. That's the gimmick of this fight. It steals your sight. I am now flying blind. As is Laura. We skip a cutscene where the boss turns like, we have now stolen your sight, and now we will steal your hearing. Because it's going to do that next. It's going to steal our hearing. Which means this boss, this this is not a glitch, this is not a bug. Do not adjust your set. Uh, you just can't see the boss or hear it anymore. This is a black screen. I like how his health bar vanished. I'm hitting. If it, it vanished because he did a <laughs> cutscene super, so I took damage. Oh. But you can't see or hear the cutscene super because we're blind and deaf. But I'm I'm hitting, so don't worry about it. This is another cutscene super. Don't worry about it. I'm going to take more damage. I should probably heal. Oh, well, we have a lot of blindfold emotes in chat right now, so that's always fun. Is this Earthbound? It's very much in that sort of world, isn't it? Let me eat the meat. I've had the meat in my inventory this whole time. This is this is working as intended. I promise this is normal. I think I got another cutscene super. I did, unfortunate. Using time. The damage the cutscene super does is random. That's why I picked up some healing items, because this can be very rude. Okay, now it fades out to another cutscene. And now that he's stolen our sight and our hearing, he will steal our life. You will die, Laura. That's, that's how this goes. So our health has been reduced to one. I've decided to remedy that real quick. The real I question think is, why even, why even take the eyes if you're just going to kill him anyway? I don't know. He's like, he's like taunting us. He's like doing a symbolic thing. Okay, so now we cannot move or hear or see, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We have to wait for a voice to speak. And by that, I mean, I need to wait for the wind. Because like literally the second the voice line starts is when I can play. There it is. Compact is now my inventory with the flower. A compact with a flower in it spawns in the inventory. This is meaningful symbolism for the plot in a way I honestly forget about. I don't know what it symbolizes, I'm sorry. Someone would have started speaking to us there if I let them finish talking, but this is a speedrun if you haven't noticed. The boss reacts very strangely to us using the flower. I don't know what using means in this context. Laura. Laura. Imada. Imada. That voice that we've heard is a male voice that has been speaking to Laura throughout the game. I have not mentioned him thus far because there hasn't really been a good time to. But remember that voice. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, photosensitive all wing is back, by the way. The photosensitive, like, duck and hide right now. This is really bad. But it's, it's brief, mercifully. But, oh, baby. Rave. Oh, God. I say a Grateful Dead concert. And that is the final boss defeated. But it's not time. Time is on final input. And, oh, boy, is the final input for this game. Well, I made the decision to end time here, and honestly, this was a mistake. So the final scene in this Rora. game, post-final boss, Rora. is this white screen where a voice is going to talk at Laura for no joke, like two minutes. And final input is after this. So, this is the end of the run, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Feels weird to do this before time is called, but this is unique. Uh, if you enjoyed the run, please drop me a follow on twitch.tv slash punchy. That's where I'm at. I do runs of nonsense like this with some degree of regularity. And if you want to run this game yourself, uh, I would love to say there's like a guide or a helpful community or something, but no, I'm like the only person who runs this game. And... Uh, I don't know, please help me figure out something. <laughs> please help me figure out stuff. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I looked it up, the game costs like $200 for me, so if yep. I obtain the, the American game, coffee I will is run it. super expensive. Oh, it reminds me of Galarians and another game I bought recently. I have Seaman recently. I would just get a JP copy. I don't have a JP Dreamcast. Nope, not done talking yet. The final input is on Laura's... When Laura finally speaks, she speaks a final word when I press A once this weirdo is done talking at me. And the final input is the final word is what D2 stands for. Because it does stand for something. It does mean something. But the game is still called that. This, this dialogue exchange, by the way, is a whole lot of to save the world, you know, use your power and... I'm not going to translate this for you. Uh, I'm going to have to tell me the word out loud because I'm not going to lie. Whenever I watch any of the runs on this show, I'm always watching without audio. <laughs> I will. Don't worry about it. Okay. He's asking, do you remember? Do you remember his name? To save everyone. I swear it's like if it's Dave or something. To save everyone, to save everyone's souls, to save your souls, you must call his name. His name. Laura, Yobinasai, Yobeo, Hayaku, Yobeo. Laura. David! Time! Wait a minute, it's Dave! Kind of time. Dave. David. Time. Did he D2 stands record? for David. What was the What was the time on that run? 156 something. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, I got like a 156. Why? I don't know. Did I just set world record during Hot Fix? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did, unless you have a VOD stored somewhere. Let's see. D2. Now, I, my world record is 157 on the dot. I... 156? Why? Why? Yeah, according to what we have, 156.06. But I, like, stood around and looked at the funky dude. <laughs> what do you mean I got 156? It's called RNG manipulation. <laughs> what do you mean I got 156? Hey, can we get, like, a tweet now continuing the trend of the GDQ world record? Because, like, we're still not that far out from AGDQ. It's still the month of January. Did you, did you, do the... did you start time late? No, we st started right when you went. You can retime the VOD if you need to, but... What do you yeah, mean I, guess I it set world... I was like, what do you mean I set record during this? I, I can't believe was... you beat the only other runner also named Punchy. I think it was because the Death Mountain RNG was really good. I finished with two grenades in pocket, which meant the encounters were really fast. Yeah. But, like, that's whack. Because if, if I wasn't messing around for marathon purposes, that probably would have been like 154. 
Well, that being said, if it's uh, a world where can record, people though, find you? Where can they find? Let's plug <laughs> yourself here. Where can they find you on not only Twitch but anywhere if they wanted to find you? <laughs> Twitch is at twitch.tv slash punchy. My Twitter is at, <laughs> at <laughs> succinct <laughs> underscore punchy. It's I succinct spelled S U C C I N C T underscore punchy. People don't know how to spell that word, so there you go. And my YouTube is at punchy like slash punchy yt. Which I guess is where this thought is going to end up going now as well in a cryptic yeah. hotfix channel because this is a world record now. I yeah. that's embarrassing somehow. Like I'm kind of embarrassed. <laughs> well, clearly it was the parked pun that we made. Oh. That's gonna be in your VOD. I hope you're happy with that. I did get really good luck, though. Is the thing like I actually did? All the boss fights were pretty good. That helped. I didn't think about that, but all the boss fights were actually pretty good. That definitely helped. All right. Well, I guess we uh, ended way ahead than we thought, or decently ahead, I should say. Cut it. <laughs> so uh, I'm not, I'm not I sure how to end that off now. <laughs> like, yeah, like uh, how much? Uh, uh, I got, I'm good. I got, I got nothing else. I want to plug. I'm not sure how to end this off now. You can still watch the ending of the run of it's here. We have plenty of time. We're currently oh, it's uh, so long. The ending of this oh, is like no, 20 mind, minutes. I'm not kidding. Never mind, we'll not get through all of it. <laughs> well, I do want to say once again for anyone who has not checked out Punching, please do so. Not only did he uh, do a great run, he got world record in a game that um, I did not think he was going to get world record in. Uh, <laughs> Me neither. I didn't think I was going to get under two hours. So there's that. Anyway, I guess we'll get ready for our next run. Once again, I do recommend checking out Punchy, a great, great person, great runner. And as well, if you're watching this over on YouTube, go on twitch.tv slash games and quick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting most nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that being said, we're going to be right back very quick with our next and last run of the night, and we're going to take a quick wellness break. This is time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, and do what you generally need to do. We are going to be right back. Thank you very much. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone, to Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, we just finished up with a wonderful D2, not Diablo 2, but D2 for the Sega Dreamcast run. And not only that, apparently it was a world record by like over a minute or about a minute or so. So once again, a big congratulations to Punchy for that. Uh, as well, before we do get on to our final run of the night, I do just want to say that unapologetically black and fast submissions are now opened. On uh, this new recurring Hotfix Marathon, black runners are front and center in a celebration of black joy. Uh, this first iteration is running from February 13th to the 14th, I guess that's two days, for 12 hours a day. Uh, submissions will be open until January 23rd, so if you'd like to get involved in that, feel free to go ahead and check that out. Uh, I believe you can find them at exclamation mark UBAF in chat for a link to the submission form. All right. So as a secondary welcome on into the hotfix and going into, I guess, more of the general two vibe of the night, we have two runs. Uh, the next run will be Resident Evil. But not only do we have that, uh, the runner is a very uh, notable runner of a certain type of run that he has dictated to be called the smooth run, which I guess some of you know what that means. If you don't, it essentially means we're going to be going into the world of no damage. It's kind of fun to check these out sometimes. And since we can see games that just sort of uh, kind of avoid you entirely getting hit. I like the challenge. I think it's fun. Anyway, we'll hear more about that uh, coming up next with Re Resident Evil 2 Remake with Carcinogen SDA. Take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Eck. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Uh, hang on. I have to I have to remove a hat from my desk. Okay, fantastic. So, anyway, I'm um, going to be doing a uh, Claire A Hardcore No Damage attempt tonight. I uh, managed to get a uh, get a No Damage run and a one hit run in today. Let's see, let's see if I actually managed to uh, get a No Damage on the GDQ main channel this time. So, uh, yeah, Claire Redfield Hardcore, and as soon as I hit yes here, we'll be starting time. So, countdown three. Two, one, go. All right. Skipping cutscenes. Chose the uh, Elza Walker costume at uh, the request of a friend. But anyway, um, gas station. You, okay? you know, you've seen this a million billion times. Wait here. We'll check it out. There is the uh, there is the possibility 
that this zombie could uh, do weird things. I could suddenly get bit out of nowhere, but let's see what happens. What's it going to do? Is it going to bump into the wall? Please bump into the wall. Good RNG. Fantastic. I will say early on as well. Claire starts with, oh, go ahead. The Claire starts with 10 bullets. Uh, she can only hold five max in her revolver, so that means that the key is on slot three this time. I wait for Leon to pop open for the cutscene to initiate. Skip. Skip. Attention all citizens. Skip again. Hold D, hold right, hold shift. Can't stop. Gotta keep moving. Normally in a speed run, you'd take a couple of bites from that armless zombie over there because that zombie can do damage to you without actually catching you in a full-on grab animation, but we're not doing that because this is a smooth run, not a speed run. So where does the name smooth run come from? I don't know. I just <laughs> saw in a YouTube comment, someone said this run is really smooth. And I don't know. I just like put the words together, smooth run, and it just worked. All right. So it's really, it's, they're, they're, it's just really that simple, you know? It's like if Nickelback can do it, why can't I? All right. Uh, as well, going into the uh, no damage or the smooth run, uh, I do know whenever you go into a category like this, there's always the certain subset of rules as what counts as damage, what doesn't count as damage. So I guess while we're going into uh, one of the earlier rooms here, uh, can you outline a little bit of what we might be expecting to avoid or to not see, I suppose? To not see? Well, I hope we're not going to see any uh... damage. Well, yeah, yeah, we're cer we're certainly not going to see any damage. Uh, basically, what I got to do is after the cutscene, a zombie is going to bust through this door, and then I have to lure him over to this desk and wait for him to commit to going over the desk. At which point, I can just quite easily get around him. But getting closer to the door means he busts through faster. Then we go over here into this corner and committed, going headed to the right. We only got five bullets in Claire's gun, so I'm going to use one bullet, then reload, and then dump in the rest of these guys. One, reload, click, click. And then these guys only take like three bullets each to take down. I mean, the dodge isn't too terribly difficult, but it has like about, eh, I'd say about a 10% chance of messing up. A very, very high 10% chance. And I don't feel like resetting, so yeah. Upon getting the knife, go this way, open the shutter. No, this run is not segmented. We're not doing a segmented run. I will, I will do a couple of safety saves because hardcore mode actually, uh, actually does not have any checkpoints. Hmm. As a quick question as well, so I, just, um, I know you mentioned yeah. uh, this is Claire first. We're talking about this for the one again. Um, between the four scenarios, there are um, a different myriad of strategies that you'd end up using, or do they mostly kind of, like, if you know what to do in one, you'll kind of know what to do in the others? Well, there's plenty of cross pollination on scenarios between each of them, but uh, between A and B scenarios, though, there's always going to be. Uh, you know, different enemy placements, among other things. Okay, good. We scored a decap on that guy. That was fantastic. Um, we're definitely not seeing him later. In order to open this safe over here, 9.15.7 gives us a couple of extra inventory slots. Then down this way, and then I'm going to open this over here because it gives us a um, it gives us a uh, speed loader for Claire's revolver. First of two upgrades. And uh, the speed loader is uh, pretty requisite for early game, I would say. As soon as we come out of here, that zombie on the floor with only one arm is going to wake up. And uh, he's going to gradually follow us up the stairs, most likely. Put this board over here. Going to board this up just, you know, because it gives us extra time to shoot zombies. That zombie is never going to come through that window. And then wait for the crosshair to close and get it nice and easy. Nice and easy. 
I seem to score decaps on this guy quite a lot. Oh, speaking of which. But yeah, you can see like it just reloads immediately with the speed loader here. We'll take this uh, key over here, we'll put it in slot one. Now, while this is not a speedrun, I do take advantage of some speedrun routing, just like with uh, item placement and whatnot, just, you know, spend less time in the menus, because it's like, well, it's not a speedrun. It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm saving any compelling gameplay over here by, you know, doing the menus any slower. And then... Okay, she is directly in the way. I'm gonna wait for her to face me. Okay, there we go. Scored. That's good. Very nice. So, uh, yeah, one of the differences between uh, standard and hardcore is uh, the sweet spot for scoring a stun on a zombie is the leg instead of the head. You are more likely to uh, score a stun by shooting them in the leg. And uh, in the case of no damage, uh, sometimes I might even take out their legs or something like that. Came down here to uh, start using up the key. We're not going to go through that door. The reason, you know, I, like, like you might be wondering, hey, why didn't you just go directly out that door after you took the key? And reason being, because um, if I went out that door, then another zombie within that office would have woken up, and uh, I actually, uh, you know, wanted to wanted to make sure that that zombie would be where he would be for whenever I. Uh, Went back through that area later during RPD two. Well, actually, I do have another question about. I guess a little bit about oh. the route, just knowing the uh, the history of uh, already two make speed running and all that. Because um, I know on the leaderboard uh, for the main speed run, there is a very contentious rule of either sixty FPS or one twenty FPS. Uh, are we on something standardized, or are you just kind of letting the FPS fly? Uh. I tend to just lock it at 120 FPS, you know, just to kind of have like a baseline, but, uh, right. you know, otherwise it is what it is. Um, right. I actually kind of messed up already because uh, I was supposed to grab the red book. Um, means I'll probably have to get it later, like during RPD3. Because like during RPD2, I'm going to be busy running away from Mr. X, but... All right. And yeah, to uh, answer the question of what happens if I take damage, then I will donate $20 to Prevent Cancer Foundation. And board uh, up this following that is uh, all good. Board up that window there. We'll take this, put it in slot uh, five, slot directly below that one. Seriously? And okay, this one is, uh, is mad trolley right now. Okay, good. While he's, uh, while he's in a stun state, I can just run right by him. No muss, no fuss. And then we're going to be going through into the uh, hallway over here. And because we didn't board up any windows earlier, we have to pop two more zombies in the leg in order to get by them. Oh, before I forget, i got to make sure that I equip that flash grenade. Because I don't want to be using the knife by mistake. I need to save that knife for um, Birkin 1, because I am going to be using the knife... Uh, the 120 Ooh. FPS knife strats against Birkin 1. All right. Uh, while we are going through this hallway, uh, I just want to mention as well, since you will be, um, you know, hopefully it won't happen. But uh -huh. uh, you do take a hit. Uh, you mentioned PCF. Um, as always, for every GDQ event, uh, for the month of January, any bits and subs and all that will be going to PCF. So I'll be adding on to the AGDQ total. Awesome. Yeah, it's always fun to kind of show that transparency and all that, because I and if you always do ask uh, during the hotfix circulation, like, oh, what, what's it going to and all that? So during the GDQ months, it's going to the respective charity. All right. So I just did a spot check on that zombie that woke up earlier. I uh, just needed to um, see where he was really quick. And sure enough, he's down the hallway. So, oh, he's moving fast. Thank. Yep. So with Claire, Claire doesn't have very many, uh, doesn't have any options 
for uh, getting rid of um, getting rid of zombies as quickly as Leon does. So we have to use the uh, grenade launcher that was not damaged, by the way. Uh, she take, she you know she stuns. She moves slower, but it's not damage. Uh, but uh, the grenade launcher it basically just does um, aggravated damage until the enemy dies. I do want that acid round right there. Going to uh, the battery in here. Take this. Take that. And especially take this, because we're going to want to mix up a lot of submachine gun rounds for later. And then we're just going to nice and slowly walk by this liquor. And once we get to the shelf, we can bust out into a run be able to get out of here safely without the liquor hitting us. And this is fish, Scorpio, water. Oh. Got to get rid of that. Fine. Fine and dandy. And... Where's Misty? There she is. Two. And number three. Our friend Angus over here. Move shelf. Moving both of these shelves early because whenever we're running away from Mr. X later, we wanna be we wanna have to push the shelf as little as possible. Actually, no. Yes. I can't decide which rounds I wanted to use. <laughs> okay. I wanted flame there, and now I want to equip the acid rounds because we're going to be getting around a round of liquor in just a moment. And acid rounds immobilize liquors precisely long enough for me to get out of the room. Uh, lady, arrow. And and that's pretty much it. Now I just gotta like put down the. Uh, well, wait a moment. I almost forgot this. Need that knife. Muy muy importante. I'm coming back for you later, Brook. All right. Uh, quick question as well, Carsey. Yeah. So I know, like, obvious things like taking a bite or, like, getting hit by the dogs, like, those are obviously going to count as hits. Um, is there anything that, like, might appear to be a hit but isn't actually a hit? Um, yeah, like, uh, sometimes Birkin has, like, sometimes Birkin has an area stun attack. Uh, same with, uh, same with Super Tyrant. Uh, but it's like, it's like G2. It's during the, during the G2 fight. You might see, you might see that. But, um, oh, hang on. And to equip that, then, yeah, there we go. Put my revolver in case all else fails. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's really, there's really not a whole lot of things that are actually like just straight up stun, but, uh, if, if it happens, you know, I will uh, I will use a healing item just to sh because like if it uh, if you use a healing item and it doesn't actually like use it doesn't work, then it means that I didn't take any points of damage. So, all right. So from here, we got to angle Claire about forty five degrees. Got to make sure the knife is in the red. That's good. He's gonna grab us. This is not damage because we were able to use a counter item. 
And then that cues off our other knife. Easy peasy. Good fight. Carson, now that we're done with the fight, uh, I actually do have a couple questions. One from chat and just one in general. All right, so one, uh, what made you want to get into, I guess, Resident Evil 2, um, you know, like, no damage, or no damage in general for this? Uh, no damage in general? Uh, well, it's something that I always wanted to do, like, since I started speedrunning, like, since I saw a bunch of people on YouTube doing it, and, then, you know, it's like, oh, that looks like it could be fun in addition, but, you know, like, trying to figure out, like, like a like a way to do it, it's like I always thought that I had to speedrun in addition to getting a no damage run in order for it to be like worth watching and then eventually i just decided like once i opened up my my uh, current youtube channel that uh because i wanted to do like i wanted to do just like really clean playthroughs and just like do commentary with them and that's kind of that's kind of how it went so i uh, i opted to just do no damage runs and not try to force it to be like a speed run and um I don't know. Like since then, I just I just feel a lot. Uh, you know, I just I, I just I just feel like this is this is a lot more fun to me than speedrunning now. So, what I do, all right. You know, not competitive. Do what I want. Clear cut goal. Don't have to spend too long on anything. It's closed. I know as well. Following up from that, uh, you've done a lot of uh, smooth runs or no damage. Um, I know they'll have like, all these on your YouTube different Mario challenges. Because you've done, uh, what, like pretty much every Resident Evil game to an extent. Um, Almost. I know you recently did Tormented Souls. Uh, I know you have your Dead Rising Perfect run. So like, well, what are some of the examples that someone could find if they wanted to look, uh, look you on YouTube or something? Uh, well, I would say like the, uh, I mean, the most popular ones, like certainly Dead Rising is a big one. That one was not a no damage run. Like I just, I just like, you know, tried to pack as much, as many achievements as I could into one run basically. But um, yeah, I have to, like we're, we're back in a uh, dangerous area of the game. So take your time uh, by the way. Yeah, so liquors in here, uh, you can see dogs here. Basically the idea is that Leon came through this area first and killed the dogs and uh, or it could be ambiguous. He could have just run by the dogs and the liquors killed them. Uh, but uh, yeah, you just, just walk by, take that path, get through. Claire does not get the crank. She has to go through the morgue. Pull this slab. Going to be a uh, diamond key here. Hopefully the movement doesn't mess, doesn't, uh, doesn't mess anything up. Okay, good. Take a wide angle around that zombie so he doesn't lunge. And then once we get here, I need to go back to walking. So the lickers, they can, they can, they can smell you, but as long as you're walking, they can't hear you unless you run. And so I can just like slip right on by these guys, you know, just straight up walking. And then there's this other licker, you know, it's just, just, just as long as you take a, as long as you take a clean line, you just get around all these guys. Just gotta watch out for Peter Parker over there, because um, you know if you if you go directly under that liquor, then Claire will touch the liquor and it will aggro, and it doesn't end well. I can't imagine. Oh. Yeah. So I picked up that uh, I picked up that key from the shooting range earlier, as well as those flame rounds. The zombies in there do not activate until after you get the diamond key. Um. So I went in there first, got the uh, got the flame rounds, got the key, and uh, now I got the uh, the JMB. The reason why I got the JMB is because of this laser sight right here. Basically, it guarantees that whatever I whatever I whatever I pointed at is going to get hit. So I want that. Ooh, actually, I have a very particular but possibly dumb question just because I'm never too well versed in Resident Evil or the games. I, I know the basics, I know certain happenings. Um, but if I remember right, I think there was some kind of glitch, and I don't know if it was a certain route, but like if you did it, you can like warp to a door you're not supposed to get too much, too much later or something. Um. Uh... 
I guess the general thing I'm getting at, uh, let's just assume it exists for a second. Um, I, if I can remember how to do it or what it skips, I can look it up during the run. But for doing any of these no damage runs, is using a glitch like that allotted, or do you more like to do the intended route, so to speak? Uh, well, I mean, there are sequence breaks in this game. Like, there's a pretty massive sequence break that's mostly reserved for the uh, for the new game plus speedrun route. Uh, but beyond that, I actually no, I don't, I don't, I don't actually use that. Like, I just, I just run like you know, straight up intended route. There's like, there's like no major glitches in this run. Okay, put All this right. away, put that away, put that away. Uh, no, 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 hold on to that. I think someone in chat also mentioned, I think it was the library stairs out of bounds. Um, yeah, I the library, being yeah. I thing early. Yeah, yeah, the library stairs out of bounds is what I'm referring to. Um, I quit my grenade launcher here so I can go back to stair skating. So uh, there is actually a very uh, there is actually a very minor trick where um, if you uh, if you have acid rounds in your grenade launcher and your inventory is full, you can actually hit E to swap your uh, bullets. Well, first I have to angle this up, strafe, and then break into a dash, create a slime to the door before the liquor pops out. Oh, dang, I forgot about you. I was actually supposed to board up that window. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Ak. Um, One more time, I'm actually not running on... Uh, <laughs> I'm actually not running on a lot of sleep here. No worries. Uh, yeah, yeah referring, the, uh... referring to, yeah, referring to the glitches, right. Yeah, um, yeah so... Uh, yeah, yeah, like, it's just, it's just straight up, you know, normal, uh, normal pathing. No sequence breaks. All right. That one plops down, so we got to take this one out, too. I'm just uh, taking these guys out early because we do come through here later, possibly, in order to escape Mr. X. Pick that in slot four. And then I'm going to uh, get rid of that knife. And uh, there. Yeah, that's what I want. And then I feel like I, feel like I need one more trip to the, uh, oh, actually. There we go. I just uh, did that uh, did that trick that I mentioned earlier, where uh, if my inventory is full, and I uh, switch from a singular grenade to another grenade that has uh, stacks, then that uh, acid grenade just occupies the um, that acid grenade just occupies the main slot. So I shot I shot her first. There's another zombie directly to my left that was getting up. Uh, if I shoot her, let the aggravated damage take care of her, run to the switch while the other zombie is getting up. I can just completely avoid that zombie altogether. Mr. X, I'm gonna stop here for a second, let him let him see me. Jesus, stay back! I want him to see me because I need to be in a position where I can get him behind me. Doing that aim dodge is actually quite risky. It doesn't look risky, but believe me when I say it actually kind of is. Okay. Stairs over there. We're going to take those stairs on the uh, far left side. We don't want to run in front of Marvin because we want Marvin to stay asleep. And then once I go in here, that zombie that I mentioned is going to wake up. I'm going to pop him real quick. Get him out of the way. Oh, but there's a liquor in here. I almost messed that up. Because the movement in this game is really spotty. 
let's just put it this way. The, the movement is the whole reason why I never got into speedrunning this game. Is because, like... Is because, like, player character does really, really weird things with the movement. And, uh, not a fan of it. Trying to see if I can't spawn Mr. X. Where is he? Come on. There he is, okay. So what happened was I unloaded part of the map by moving around a little bit, and in doing so, Mr. X zips over here. I'm going to kite him around here. Give me enough time to be able to walk past the liquor. And then once I hit this door, break into a run. That zombie wakes up whenever you run behind him. If you don't run behind him, then he will always stay asleep. Mr. X is still pretty far away, so... Gives me exactly enough time to use the jack and push those two shelves or these three shelves over there to the right once. I'm doing a smooth run. Mr. X, understandable. Have a nice day. Movement was super scary. Nah, it's not that scary. Once you get used to it, it's fine. Now dodging zombies, that's scary. Take that. I would say that liquors are probably the uh, scariest part of this run. Definitely liquors. Put in the small gear. I'm listening for Mr. X. Mr. X is definitely on the third floor now, so I have no idea where he's going to be when I get out. That worked. Fascinating. Where is he? I don't hear him anywhere. He must be in the library or something. Oh, random oh nope, there he is. Oh. Okay, never mind. Yeah, he was, he was just probably just standing there. I don't know. He does that sometimes. I, I can't, I can't explain Mr. X. Mr. X just does things sometimes. He does his best. Well, unfortunately for him, I am RPD hide and seek world champion. So we're done. Done. Donezo. All right. So we'll take the JMB. We'll take the handgun ammo. Um, Put that away for now. I do want those grenades right there. And also put that away. Uh, we'll come back in RPD-3 in order to get the uh, the scepter. I uh, already missed a bit of time because I was supposed to get the scepter during RPD-1, but it's all right. I don't really have any practice solving this puzzle quickly, so bear with me. No worries. Okay, so rotate that down and and then up and there. Okay. Could certainly go a lot faster, but I didn't actually uh I don't actually have any muscle memory for speed solve of that. And not really too terribly much going on in the sherry section, but uh it's just like one puzzle and you know it's like uh, you know, a lot of tension, a lot of stealth. Fortunately, it's not, like, too terribly long. It's not been a Viento house in village, so. We have to put uh, the... Uh, we have to put the, uh, the first block in the third slot and then just rotate them all to match after that, so. That's about the only consistency in the puzzle is the first block goes into the third slot. What is Everything this? else you have to solve on your own, so. It could take a couple of extra seconds.
Uh, hello? <laughs> Don't run! It's a smooth run. Uh. Got a frowny face, so you know not to run. I'm also going to make oh. a safety save over here. Yeah. Because yeah, here. this could be disastrous. I was about to ask if Sherry is going to be one of the easier or the harder sections, because I know this is essentially, what, one hit kill? Uh, yeah, but sometimes the game can just glitch out and irons will see you anyway, which is why oh. I make the safety save here. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't explain, I can't explain why he does it. I just know that sometimes, like, like I've, uh, like I've been huddled in a corner that I've huddled in like literally a hundred times and iron still sees me because like, I don't know, like, like one pixel of flashlight beam just like shines on Sherry or something like that. Maybe I can't explain it. Huh. You can't say that on GDQ irons. <laughs> well, the censor it out. Don't worry. I don't think he's smooth enough. You stupid bitch, that's a dead end. Whoa! Language! <laughs> Alright, so this is the this is the first spot. We have to like kind of strafe around here, but Yeah, that flashlight that flashlight comes into contact with us. We are uh we are donezo, and I gotta reload that save. I will count it as uh I will count it as damage. So, does the it's flashlight um, have Don't different properties walk. on standard and hardcore? No, it's a, it's all the same. It just sometimes it just glitches Where out. Are you? Show yourself! I know you're in here. It probably does more the checks per second on a higher frame rate, you. though. If I had the to guess. It's gonna be. Well, as long as Irons doesn't kill you, we'll let his potty mouth slide. All right, so. I've been uh, doing this lately. I've just been holding the right mouse button and uh, holding W and D. Uh, if you move the mouse at all, then Sherry will move. Like, her collision will just, like, push her around oh God. Oh God. because she has to turn to face and irons will just catch you. Bitch has gotta be here somewhere. <sighs> move, Sherry. Come on, come on. God damn it. Yeah, sometimes the movement in this game can... Oh, like that, see? She just like stopped all of a sudden for no reason. And it's like the movement in this game, there is like no semblance of consistency to the movement whatsoever. I mean, you can practice it and get like kind of consistent, but otherwise like the game will just do random things and wig out and she just like won't move in a straight line. Oh, did I say W and D? I meant W and A. My bad. Now! It burns! Okay, so after this, we can actually start moving over there. While he's washing his face. Alright, pretty much safe now. So, um... Yeah, like other things that people could expect to see on my channel. Uh, I got an alien isolation, no damage run. That one's pretty popular. A lot of people are asking me why I see the aliens so little, but I did it segmented and, it, you know, I just like kept resetting segments for like three weeks until I got it. I just like to do like segmented runs of some games. Like if I just like don't want to put in like too much effort, but you know, it's like if I stuck a claim for like no save, then you know that'd be that that'd be something completely different. Like I just like to I just like to make like no damage walkthroughs mostly. Right. I just I know take. Oh, what? I did, yeah, you know I just I just I just take joy in like you know showing people cool stuff in video games and just like how to beat the games efficiently. You know. Yeah. And I was gonna say one I really liked was the because I know you're working on a while back was the Parasite Eve uh, no damage with how wild that run. Oh yeah, that one's that one's actually one of my favorites. I mean, it probably oh, yeah. it, it, it probably doesn't get as much traction as it should just simply because Parasite Eve is, you know, it's like it's like while it's like while people who you know lived through the PlayStation era remember it fondly, I would still call it. I would still call it like a cult classic. I would still call it like pretty. Yeah, I would still I would still call it. You know, 
pretty niche nowadays, but that, that, that one was actually a lot of fun to do. Also, a really quick one, because I know it's about to get busy. So you mentioned some of the stuff people can find on your channel. Uh, is there any upcoming projects you have with no damage stuff? Uh, or smooth run stuff? Well, I'm uh, I'm mostly doing this. Um, sorry, I'm just going to pause to just Take like talk about it because Mr. X will show up as soon as I use this key card. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know. Um, yeah, so my uh, my YouTube is at youtube.com slash carcinogen SDA. Uh, I'm uh, currently working on Resident Evil 2 Remake. I already did no save, no damage runs of like all the scenarios in this game. Um, but I just like wanted to redo them and like, you know, do like all four scenarios, but just do like two runs for each. One with, you know, complete safety strats. So, like, say if you're playing on console and you can't do, like, the knife strats, then, you know, it's like it's like the, it's like that video is for you. But otherwise, if you're playing on PC and, you know, you got good execution and whatnot, then, you know, you can try, like, some of the more advanced strats, like, you know, 120 FPS knife and, you know, just, like, just, like skimping by with, like, less items and stuff like that. So um, that's, what I, that's, that's, that's what I'm going to do over the next, like, couple of months or so, probably. All right. All right, so as soon as I use this key card, Mr. X, take a nice wide path around here. Just keep running. Oh, shoot, he's turning. Okay, this this is good, this is good. That actually could have gone, that actually could have gone another way if, <laughs> if he actually like started moving any faster. Usually I just like take a couple of extra seconds to make sure that I kite him around the car correctly. He is he is fast. He's got that he's got that uh, that movie killer movement where it's like just slightly slower than your character. But if you but but you know that if you stop, he is going to catch up and he is going to just destroy all of your holidays. Um, as soon as I go through the gate, I sacrifice a flash grenade. Um, Claire can actually use flash grenades quite freely compared to Leon because. Leon has to deal with the Super Tyrant at the end of the game, and the Super Tyrant, you need to constantly keep it on stun lock, otherwise you're going to get hit. Come on. Aim, hello. I just need... Wow, dang. I just need to take out that leg. Come on. Her leg is extra strong today. So that means that uh, I can have, like, three stacks of defense items, which actually is one of the reasons why Claire is just significantly easier, consequently. Where's this guy going? Is he going to go around? Nope. Okay. And then there's one more dog. He's feasting. One, two, three. Any more? 29 bullets left. But yeah, this is why I, this is why I choose to use the uh, the JMB here instead of the revolver is just simply because of the, uh, you know, the larger, the larger mag capacity and... Uh, on top of that, the laser sight just means that it's going to guarantee that the bullet is going to go wherever I point the gun, which is uh, requisite for uh, shooting these dogs, as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to leave anything up to chance, because that uh, that cone of fire, that um, reticule spread, you know, we don't trust it. Never, ever trust reticule spread. stun on that one. Where's he going? I'm gonna go over here. To the right. Nice score kill. Up oh, here he comes. Oh shoot. Okay, he's committed to that, so he's not going to go back over that way. Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, whew. Okay. That was actually really close. Because, like, I didn't expect his leg to give out that early, and I was, like, really far away when his, uh, when his leg gave out. So, if I didn't start moving when I did, then he would have, he would have probably, like, grabbed my leg within, like, a tenth of a second. Good job. That's so, good job. I have a feed going on Discord, by the way. Yeah. 
climbing down here. I'm not going to go get the submachine gun bullets up top. There's no reason to do so. Sherry! Where are you? Clear! Sherry! I'll be right there! And out, around. Here comes Mr. X. Go, go, go! Over here, skip cutscene. Go, go, go! <laughs> this whole thread just repeats whenever you skip the cutscene here for just no reason in particular. Just go, go, go! It's kind of fun to have her yelling at nothing. Yeah. Um. Put that away. I still need that flash grenade. That's actually, it's actually a good, good. Uh, Thing that I have a singular flash grenade because I need that in a second. I'll take the SLS here as well. Um, did I get it? Yeah, okay, I got it. And then there's Keep going. some submachine gun bullets here that I also need. Uh, so I know Can one enemy in particular me? seems to be the uh, absolute hell for uh, a lot of speedrunners and casual players alike. And going into the no damage smooth run, how bad are the G adults? Uh, well, that is what the that is what the submachine gun is for. I uh, right. I take a detour into RPD three, just really quickly, like in order to get the submachine gun. Um, like that's why I'm mixing like so many submachine gun rounds is because it just absolutely wrecks bosses. It absolutely wrecks the G adults. It's just, it's just a, uh, you know, for, for like the absolute safest no damage strats, it's a no brainer. So it does take a little bit of time. It's not like particularly fascinating to watch or anything. I'm going to run over to this uh, glass over here. Wait for this guy to get up because if I throw this flash grenade too early, then he will uh, remain unaffected by the flash grenade and I won't be able to pick up those uh, flame rounds there. S C F. These zombies are not present in uh, Leon's scenario. Yeah. Turn reverse. Hold on, Sherry. I think. Yeah, I think I'm okay. Right like, don't I have an extra gunpowder in here? I think I do. I want to double check because I didn't grab. Yeah, I didn't grab that other gunpowder there. I'm gonna that for now. I don't actually remember how many inventory slots I need to have open for this in order to get everything that I need to get here. Um, but yeah, the G adults are uh, largely a non-issue. I mean, I manipulate them a little bit, but mostly I just DPS them to death. Because uh, the eye is right there and it takes like less than a clip of submachine gun bullets to kill one. So I just do whatever I can to not have to fight any until I get the submachine gun. 9, 15, 7. Wait, no. This is 212.8. Sorry, I'm tired. There we go. All good. So now we got the, uh, now we got the, the reinforced frame. So now Claire's, uh, revolver is now a Magnum revolver, a three, 357. Uh, wait for Hirabayashi-san to show up here. There we go. I believe that zombie right there is actually modeled after uh, one of the producers of the game, Yoshiaki Hirabayashi. Cool. And my favorite zombie in the game is Misty. <laughs> yeah, we've been calling her. Uh, we've been calling her Misty since Resident Evil 2 Classic. Uh, I believe, it, yeah, it was uh, Fierce Kyo who actually came up with that first. Was uh, started calling, just started calling, calling her Misty because she looked like Misty from Pokemon. So, come over here, pull this lever. Uh, come on now. I need to pick up this. Uh, Hand grenade here. 
and... Did I grab that? No, I didn't. Got to move perpendicular to the G-Adult coming out of the pipe here, because if we move... If we move directly towards that ledge over there, then the G-Adult will catch us in a stun, and he will grab us, and we don't want that. I actually want to try to save my grenades as much as possible. Like my like my regular hand grenades, I want to save those for the final boss because they just make really short work of the boss. Beats using the minigun. And so... Pump. Pump that up. Jesus. And then number two right there. Just trying to take into account that stumble. I don't want to miss any of these if I can help it. And then the last one is over here. How am I doing on space? Oh! That's how I'm doing on space. Marvelous. I think I actually had exactly the right number of inventory slots. So we're going to move this locker over here, we're going to go to RPD-3, going to develop the film. Um, also going to uh, get the, uh, get that, get that red book that I, uh, that I didn't pick up earlier. Any, uh, any questions that you saw in chat so far? Let's see. I'm seeing a lot of people type um, smooth, uh, different variations of smooth. Awesome. <laughs> Which I say is good. Uh, general questions. Let's, let's see. I nice also decided if anyone in chat does have any questions about the run in general, do feel free to let us know. This is the last time I'm going to be using the T-shaped handle, so I can uh, open the box here, put that away, put that away. I don't need that key anymore. Um, I'll also put this away? Maybe this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I'll put that away too. Oh. Racking my brain. Just need to remember. There's a, there's a lot of inventory juggling. If this was a speed run, I'd have like less inventory stuff to remember, I think. Right. Uh, actually, I do see a question in chat that does raise um, a good point here. Uh, it's may it's kind of I'll lead into this my own as well, but they're asking, uh, do you prefer console or PC? And in the same vein, because uh, I think you're playing on PC, um, do you play this on mouse and keyboard or controller? I uh, typically I like to play on mouse and keyboard. Um, I'm doing both, uh, mouse and keyboard or controller. Uh. Especially for, like, those YouTube runs that I mentioned, you know, with, like, the console strats versus the advanced strats. If I do the console strats, I'm actually going to do them on controller, though. So, like, I already did a, uh, I already did a, I already did one run on controller. So here's our, here's our little detour here. And, oh. Do you prefer RE2, RG, or Remake? Reasoning, apples and oranges. On that note, what do you prefer, chat? Original or Remake? A good question. I'm asking chat all the hard questions. <laughs> it is a hard-hitting question. I like mm. parts of both. It's not fair. Yeah, I mean the remake doesn't replace the original. Yeah, it uh, it is it is definitely it is definitely a video game in its own right, and I like them both for different reasons, frankly. But I would say that all the uh, no damage strats so far are certainly a lot more consistent on. Uh, well, I mean, like if we're talking like you know difficulty, I guess then yeah, like the remake is probably easier. Gotta walk around here because that guy is still there. The 
the reason why I went second floor instead of the first floor is because, yeah, we passed by a liquor in this very hallway earlier. So... I need to get to this save room and I need to develop this film because the uh, secrets will not open. The secrets will not open unless I... Uh, Develop the film. He scratches on the back next to that lever. I will take a moment to, um, I didn't actually like solidly rat out my ammo here, so I actually don't remember like at what points I'm going to have like what ammo. Because I'm still like kind of you know, subtly routing this on the fly a little bit, but I mean, I've got all my enemy strats down enough to be able to do a marathon run of this, so. This is what we got yeah. so far. Uh, okay, so I got some submachine gun bullets there. I got the stars badge, which will allow us to get, <coughs> get the submachine gun. Continuing on with the run, I actually have a question of my own, and that is, what's going to be the hardest enemy, or either specific or type, to deal with during the run? Um, I would say liquors, definitely liquors, one hundred percent liquors, because uh, it's like you just you just you just can't trust liquors. But otherwise, I mean, Claire's guns for the most part tend to uh, tend to actually seem to be a lot more consistent for uh, getting around enemies. But uh, I I uh, banked up that uh, acid grenade from earlier, the one that I really insisted on keeping, because there is a particular problem liquor that I'm going to have to deal with once I get into the labs. But other than that, I mean, the rest of it is... Pretty smooth sailing. Like, I think this run might actually be free. <laughs> uh, sorry, Marvin. Oh, God, no. Um, Marvin. I can drop this. I'll drop that. Should be good. I need five inventory slots. Open. I need. Well, actually, probably four once I already have the rook plug. <coughs> the rook plug. But I need about that many open. Use this. Check. Retract that. Put that down. Take the suppressor. Reason being. It uh, keeps my muzzle from jumping around so I can focus fire on something and uh, deliver a pretty constant stream of DPS to it. It's like, but what would be the what would be the point of a silencer on a machine gun like this? And just uh, you know, turn it into like uh, turn it into the lightning gun from Quake, you know, constant steady stream of DPS. As long as your aim is true. Get over here. Where's our uh, where's our boy? He is... If he's not there, then he's down the hallway sucking up garbage. Sure is. He is not going to trouble us any. Uh, the name of the four-player co-op one on PS2 was Resident Evil Outbreak. There are two... There are two volumes... Well, files, quote-unquote. There's like two different Resident Evil Outbreak games. But what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to pop this guy. I'm going to launch out. And... Made short work of him. Wait for this guy to face me. 
He's got a couple of layers. All right, I did exactly enough in order to interrupt him before he vomited any more uh, children. Wow, okay, that was pretty solid. And then there's another uh, thing of ammunition over here. Take that. And we got to move perpendicular to this pipe. Actually, I can just round the corner like this, but basically that G-Mutant's going to pop out. We want him to pop out. I mean, he has to. But I'll pick up the spark shot and deal with him later if he gets in our way. There's the queen plug. There's the queen plug. This guy is going to plop down in just a moment. Is he going to get on his going to get on his feet? There sure is. I would prefer that you not. I'm just so sad watching him stand up only to fall again. Well, Fall down seven, get up eight. Queen plug, king plug. We already trapped him in there. He's basically just, he's basically just doomed to be there for all eternity, which is unfortunate, but putting him out of his misery would uh, be a waste of bullets. And we got to go. Got our spark shot here. Oh yeah, he is directly in our way, so we're just gonna gonna barbecue him really quick. Pop him directly in the eye. You just gotta keep holding your aim in order for the spark shot to work. A lot of people actually don't know how the spark shot works. You just gotta keep aiming at it. You don't gotta hold the fire button down, you just gotta keep aiming at it, you just gotta keep your reticule on it, and eventually the uh, shock dart will ding, and... It'll barbecue him. Coming up, G2 is... Uh, Definitely one of the scarier encounters in the game. But it's okay, I got plenty of practice on him. Start by solving this puzzle just to clear out our inventory here. Queen. King. That. Rook. Uh, hello. Accidentally hit examine. All right, I'll move Jerry. over here. On my way. Box. And I want the submachine gun. I'm going to... Max, max us out here a little bit. Okay. Put that away and then take flame rounds and the flash grenade. Where's my where's my grenade launcher? Hello? Thank you. Uh I will take the SLS sixty as well. Just just the SLS sixty and nothing else. Uh anything? No. I believe that's it. We've got our flashbangs. We got the SLS-60 for zombies later. We got the grenade launcher. We got our DPS weapon. We are set. Or one, one, two. I don't have very good piano fingers. I'm gonna run across this hose and eek around. So Billy B will throw his claw on the ceiling. Gonna 
plunge again, I think. Yep. Okay, that should be enough, right? Do a quick mag dump, wait for him to zip to the right. Yep, there he goes. Once he zips to the right there, that is our uh, that is our cue to go. As long as we wait for him to uh, zip to the right there a little bit, it means that he will waste an action slamming against the wall. One point or another. I'm going to send that away. All right, and then pause. He's getting up now. And then toss. Have I got a surprise for you? And that's the end of that. Couple more quick mag dumps while he's down the second time, and yep, okay, we got everything. Made fun. This is taking yeah, forever. that was actually uh, that was actually pretty clean. Like, I was having trouble like figuring out like uh, like when to stop and reload my grenade launcher earlier, but it turns out that I just needed to stagger my uh, SMG, like stagger my mag dumping a little bit, just kind of kind of take a few extra seconds. That cable car. Has there been a hit? Not yet. It's been a Not very good yet. run so far. It's been clean. Actually, I do have a question about that fight. Um, on, with G... You're gonna be fine. I can remember the order. G2? Yeah. With G2, I guess really any of the... I don't even know why, just G2, any of the G5s. Um, does he have like a damage there. cap or damage or vulnerability? Because you said you're, you're staggering the shots. You were just pumping them full entirely. Um, is there a reason for the stagger? Cable car. Oh, um, the reason for the the reason for the stagger is because his HP needs to be below a certain point in order for the uh, in order okay. for the crane to be able to end the fight. Uh, right. He has to be He's under fifty percent HP. Uh, otherwise, the uh, crane will just do seven hundred damage, or this sorry, seven thousand damage. Um, but uh, you know, I'm trying to trying to stagger it. I'm trying to uh, stop a little bit so that I have time, so that I take the time to reload my grenade launcher. Because I need the aggravated damage from the uh, from the flame grenade against him to uh, to be uh, to be procking while I'm uh, hitting him with the uh, submachine gun in order to make sure that I do enough damage for the uh, container to end the fight. But as long as that container hits him while he's under 58 or 50 percent HP, which is I believe about 12,000 HP or something like that, according to the uh, SRT speedrun tool. Then the fight will end. All right. Can you end that fight by just shooting him? No, it has to be with the container. There's no other way. Oh, okay. Pick that up. And then equip the magnum. This is what we need the magnum for. Uh, okay. I think I'm doing pretty good on ammunition for now. I might need to drop that knife. Take that. Oh, actually. I'll put this just in case. Because there is a uh there is only one zombie that I actually need to shoot, but he's uh he's armored. He's a he's an umbrella secret service agent. So he's uh so he's got uh so he's got bulletproof plating all over him basically, and his only vulnerability is his head. It's usually right about here. Yep. Bit of a weird shot. If it works, it works. And not complain. All right, I'll take those. And I need one inventory slot free, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And take the uh, high voltage capacitor, which will um, make the spark shot ding a lot faster. It'll take less time for the spark shots uh, for the spark shot to proc. If I uh, put that on the spark shot. Dr. 
This is the next closest item box here, so I'm just going to do this next. Uh, put that away. I want to keep that. Um, do I got any more? Yes, I do. Put that away. Uh, I'll go ahead and combine this because I don't want to forget that later whenever I go to fight G3. Um, uh, I think we're good. By Chief Cartwright in the East Area. <laughs> Did I not have an extra white gunpowder? Like I said, my, 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 my gunpowder routing is actually quite terrible. Okay, I do. I thought so. So, good. Okay. Gunpowder routing back on track. Yeah, if G2 is above 50% HP, then... Then the crane will just do 7,000 damage against it instead, and the fight will still continue. Um, I think there is a visual cue. Uh, the giant eye on G2's shoulder gets redder and redder the closer it is to the fight, to the fight being able to end. I think if its eye is like completely red, then get away with it. Yeah, you speed run a little bit of Resident Evil, don't you, Ak? Uh, kind of. Um, my speedrunning Resident Evil is weird because I've done a lot more games than one would expect. I just don't do them a lot. Yeah, no, no, no. That's totally fair. That's totally fair. I didn't expect you to, like, you know, do, like, a deep dive or anything like that because, you know, oh, it's yeah. like, I know I know you play, like, you have, like, you have, like, freaking, you've done, like, freaking a hundred different, yeah. different, like, horror game speedruns. Like, let's see. For me, for speedrunning, I've done RE1 make, uh, RE3 classic, RE2 make, RE3 make. I've done RE4, but not well. I've done Operation Raccoon City, I've done seven, and I kind of actually want to do six. Dang. I yeah, only didn't do Village because uh... my computer uh, couldn't handle it at the time. Yeah, well, a lot of people's computers actually can't handle them, truth be told. I think that I think that uh, Resident, Evil, Resident Evil Village is... Uh, Bit too patrician for most people people's computers due to the uh, due to the copy protection due to like Denuvo. Yeah. So the speed solve for this puzzle is RGB, RGB, RG. So just like red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green for a scenario. Sounds like he could use clear eyes for real dry eyes. Not gonna pick that one up yet. I do need some acid rounds though. Oh, 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 hey, buddy. Getting a little too close for comfort, my guy. Lopping around like a fish. He really does not like that fire. I just use the flame rounds to get around these guys mostly. Uh, okay, what next? There, and then one, two, three. Here's where that acid round comes in. Let's we'll see if this works. Nice. I'm gonna remember that next time. That was actually one of the other things that I was worried about was just that liquor right there. So I think we're I think we're about good for the rest of the run, unless something horrendous happens. Careful with that. I know, Be I careful. know, I know, I know. I can't get too complacent. I'm just saying, every time that comes up on a show, like any other run, any run in general, it's always. Well, the, you know uh... what? You know what? I need a challenge. That's this is fair. the run. <laughs> hey, it's been a good run so far. This is the run, okay? This is the run. What do you say it's smooth? This is the smooth run. It is. All right, so um, I went back into the save room because that actually uh, changes the position of the liquors. 
if I did not go into the save room and uh, come back down here, then the two liquors in this room, like a second liquor came out from that vent up there, and it's currently hiding somewhere over there. Uh, there's another save room over there. Uh, then both of those liquors would have been grouped together over here, and obviously that's uh, it's not good for uh, it's not good for anything. So means I only got to kite one liquor instead of two around these tables. Hey, come on now. Oh, what is he doing? Well, it won't be a horror game without any tension now, will it? Thank you. Cool. Welcome Just got to ride on through here. Door. Round. Skipperoo. Take that. Door here. As soon as we get back into that other room, the liquors should be de -aggroed. But I usually like to uh, break into a run before I hit this door here, because then it means that the liquor that we kited around earlier will just be over here instead. He chooses a new place to just kind of hang out till he smells something. He just wants smells. Receiving damage. And so far, I haven't taken a single hit, so we're doing pretty good so far. Um, yeah, I can put this away. That's good. Uh, yeah, I'll just do the rest of my inventory management later, but I want to prioritize using this knife first in case I get grabbed by a Groot for some weird reason. All right, no more liquors. Standard enemies should not be a problem anymore. So the only thing that I really have to worry about now is G3 and G4. I'm go this way. But fortunately, with the grenade launcher, flame rounds, we can just hit and run. Dispense. So much for the weed infestation. Claire has a lot more goofy one-liners than Leon does in the remake, I think. Alright, so I can go that way, and if I cut that corner tight, I can pop this guy. Oh my god. That is why we have a knife. That is why we have defense items in general, because if I didn't use that defense item, then he would have killed me. You mean he would have raised $20 for charity? And he would have sent me all the way back to the orphanage. <laughs> that's a lot worse. Yeah, that's even worse, meaning I would have had, meaning I would have to mercy kill the run. But, you know, that's that's the thing is like, <laughs> it's like if you get grabbed by an Ivy, just mash space bar and hope you have a defense item. But I'm also going to do another safety save before G3. Uh, in case something wacky new new happens here. Also, right now probably is a good time to mention once again that getting grabbed is not innately damaged because I think the damage only kicks in if you don't defend yourself. Right. If you do not use a defense item, then the enemy will cause damage to you. The, def the defense item is basically just a free pass. It's just an escape. Get out of jail free card. As long as you got them. There's Oss. And then, oh, oh, hello. Put that away. Uh, I am going to keep that knife. Put that away. Uh, I need 
I think two stacks of submachine gun ammo is good enough. Then I need the spark shot and I need the submachine gun. Um, I might actually be staring right at it, but I'm not sure. All right, so grenade is on two, machine gun on one, spark shot on four. I need to get acid rounds from this room here. We only need uh, we only need just four acid rounds is good enough. So I'm going to save the game now. And I want that combat knife. The reason why I want the combat knife is in case uh, something messes up and I'm forced to use a defense item. Like if I mess up a dodge. All right. So I am, I need to start the fight with the submachine gun. Gotta get back to Sherry. Take out the leg eye, the back eye, hit him with an acid, and then do a spark shot. Leg eye. Back eye. Grenade launcher. Hit him with hit him in the shoulder right there. And then pull out the submachine gun again. And start back dumping. Behind him. I was gonna do another leg. Uh, oh shoot, I need to reload. Come on, come on. Damn it! Sorry. Aww. That freaking AoE on that attack, it's so stupid. I probably actually should have just charged right into him, actually, from that distance. Because then I would have gotten caught in the grab instead. I thought I was out of his AoE range. That was really unfortunate. Still a good run, all things considered. Yeah. Well, one one damage. One damage. <sighs> That's depressing. I think it happened in the same spot as the last time I was on... GDQ as well, freaking G3. It's always G3. It's a tough fight. It's a, it's a terrible fight. <laughs> I just hate that attack so much because, you know, it's like it's like why should it why should it even why should it even hurt you, you know? I feel like something like that should you know just maybe stun you or something. Like also, where's the consistency, see, um... man? I do see chat wondering. It's not the end of the run. We still are going to finish up here. All that happens is G3 raised $20 for PCF. That is correct. So I will be donating $20 to PCF. Courtesy of William Birkin. See, William Birkin's actually not that bad of a guy. Sure. <laughs> but it has been a good run so far. Mm. But it was a cheap shot. All right, all right. Suck it up. Got like an eye. Let's go. Also, I'll take partial blame for that hit. Uh, commentator's curse and all that. Okay. <laughs> it's fair. That's fair. That's fair. And now we got Sherry. I'm going to use like two more of these spark shot rounds to take care of a couple of straight groots. I don't have my knife. Okay, so I got to watch out for that. I also as well, though, because a lot of people are saying they want to see uh, more of the, the no damage type of run. You can find Carsey at that link in chat. 
Ah, thank you. Yeah. I know you've been doing a lot of the uh, RE2 make uh, different scenarios in general lately, so. Yeah, yeah. That's been Very my uh, been my focus lately, the RE2 remake. Oh, thanks, Richard. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, my YouTube channel is probably going to be the one you guys want to see. That's where I got all the that's where I got all the good commentary. I'm really glad I met you too, Sherry. But save your thanks until I get you out of this place. Yeah, it's my uh my get out of jail free card is I uh just donate to PCF every time I take a hit. Works every time. Works every time. Alright. Did I okay. I did equip those on the off chance that I get grabbed for some strange reason, like if the movement messes up or something. Wait for, uh... Yeah, I didn't see, I didn't see anything. Did you guys see any damage in here, chat? I didn't see nothing. No, the stream lagged. Oh, really? Yeah, don't know what happened, apparently. Oh, carry on. On clear scenario, these guys are just getting up, and while they're getting up, you can just run right by. You don't even need to spend any ammo. Ain't nothing. Yeah. Run's still smooth. Oh, oops. Stupid thing's locked. Tried to skip cutscene. <laughs> Sherry, what are you? I think I can open it from the other side. Made a safety save, lol, it doesn't count. Didn't use safety save. Barbecue them as they come out of the out of the woodwork. Language player. There's one more zombie. He's only got 50 HP, so you know you can just. Just fart on him a little bit. He'll go down. He's done. Sherry, you hanging in there? I'm right behind you. Had a girl. I think we're almost out of here. And I put everything away. And only take out grenades. We just want to be fully stacked with grenades, and we're about to get a minigun in a second. We just need to focus on popping eyes. and true that I relied on or that I rely on for this fight that is opened by popping a few eyes at the start it's gonna jump down here and I always try to stay at one of the ends of the train because if he charges like that and I'm not at the corner is that gonna hit yes beautiful Clean. Basically, I just want to be uh, timing out my grenade throws here. Got to get to another end because that end is compromised. Stay away. These grenades actually have pretty good reach. Okay. So as long as I stay around a corner here, like I said, is that going to... Oh, wow. He just walked right into that. Fantastic. Oh, that's it? Oh, that sure is. Wow, that actually might be the fastest G4 fight I've ever had. <laughs> hey, makes up for the last fight, right? Yeah. So, yeah, once he's uh, down on his legs like that, that's it. And time. All right, GG. 
to the time you need to get. You looks like you have about a one twenty five something. GG. Yeah. So with G four, yeah, all you gotta do is just pop his eyes. Like, it's not a it's not a fight dependent on HP. It's just a set number of eyes that you have to blow up in order to get him to crawl around. And when he's crawling around, he's dead. You know, you can time out the fight the rest of the time. But otherwise, it's just a uh, Gatling gun. That's it. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, <laughs> dang, I, if if only I don't know. It's like it's like if only I'd actually like moved forward. Whenever G3 like leapt up like that, that would have been that would have been a full on no damage run. But freaking area damage, like I don't even know why they gave G3 like that type of area damage. Man, it's a lot of the fun of doing, it, especially live. You have to be already like you know you have to kind of roll punches. I know you're good for it. You've done runs for us in the past here. Yeah, I well know that good. was yeah it was wasn't wasn't a no damage run. I took I took one, I took one one damage run. Yeah one. One hit that was actually that was actually damage, but you know I'll get it I'll get oh. it next time. Although now that we're finishing up the run, there's a couple questions for you. Uh, for one, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to anyone? Uh, yeah, huge shout outs to uh, my friend Matt DeRock, who uh, basically helps me come up with like uh, most of the uh, most of the no damage strategies for uh, for all of my no damage runs of Resident Evil. Uh, go check him out, twitch.tv slash Matt DeRock, and. Uh, yeah, that's about it, really. <laughs> oh, for my second Other question, though, if anyone wanted to check you out, where can they find you? It could be anywhere. Okay, so uh, you can find me on youtube.com slash carcinogensda. I have a lot of uh, commentaries of no damage runs of just, like, different games. Mostly survival horror, trying to branch out, do, like, other challenge runs of other games, other genres, but uh, a lot of the content on my stream or on my uh, YouTube channel is uh, predominantly no damage stuff. Uh, otherwise, I stream live at uh, twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. And uh, yeah, that's where all the magic happens, I guess. So, um, all right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, I do want to thank you again for doing this run. And before we do head on off for the night, uh, if you have anything else you'd like to add, feel free to go for it. Um, Nothing. I'm just going to donate $20 to PCF because Billy B, that's why. That's Again, fair. this is this this is the, this is the second speed runs from from the crypt in a row, where the run has ended on G three, and uh, I don't know. I ran it. I ran it back. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Maybe we'll find yeah, out. Hey, we'll see. We will see. And with that, uh, that wraps up our show for the night. I do want to say thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Speedruns in the Crypt. We are now officially back uh, from the AGT break and we'll be back on our regular schedule of every two weeks. That means it's bi-weekly, so we'll be back in two weeks around the same time and two weeks after that and so on and so forth. Uh, as well, while Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online is over, Hotfix is year-round. So if you like speedruns from the crypt and many shows like this, uh, you can find more information on those at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. As well, we're on pretty much every night around different times, the Friday different things. I have been your host, Dick Dysis. You can find me somewhere in this general region by name. Also, I finally got my name on Twitter, so I no longer have the weird name. Now I'm just Dick Dysis everywhere, and it's kind of cool, and I'm happy for that. Anyway, I do hope that you all join us for a raid, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and our night, and have a good one. Thank you, Eck.